What's up, you crazy ass bitches out there? Terrence Fop here from Grunt Speak, where you're going to get all grunt all the time. We don't care about your feelings and we call it as we see them. <laughs> Damn right. I got my guy over there, my comsec dude, Blake. Comsec. Yeah, comsec. I like, yep. I like it. Hey, look, you can't have an HQ without somebody working comsec. This is true. Otherwise, uh, you're just there talking to yourself, pointing at a bunch of uh, diagrams on the wall, and people think you're crazy, and then they come hitching the head with a sack full of nickels, and you wind up in a happy room. Or what my uh, estranged relatives near the UP call a Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen, I drove through the UP once a long time ago when I was coming back from uh, Fort Lewis. Oh, yeah. I had to drive all the way across. And I remember it was Friday. Uh, it was about 9 o'clock at night. And I pull into a gas station to get gas. And I got all my guns in the car. And literally, there were three pickup trucks with the young kids in them. Yeah. They had couches in the back. And they, had a, they, had, they literally had a keg of beer. And they're sitting there drinking beer and just driving around town with... The, I'm like, I need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's not good. I'm out. Sounds like a good time to me. <laughs> no, man, no. These are the kind of people who pull like uh, toboggan sleds behind uh, behind four wheelers. Oh yeah. You know, no regards for human safety whatsoever. No, just, well, me when, we, when I was a kid, me and my buddy uh, Chuck and Eric Herman. Uh, I've known Chuck since he was eight. His son, uh, his uh, brother, since he was six. And we used to get those little skis and used to stra- strap your boots. And we would literally grab on the back of bumpers and ski all the way to school. Sounds like the opening of Back to the Future. That yeah, was pretty good. Just grabs onto it with a skateboard. But the thing is, when you come into the school, there's a, there's like a little bank on the road. So you time it just right. You let go. You slide right into this the big snow plow of snow. Boom. Pick it up. Take off your skis and go right to school. I'm an expert at timing things right and sliding right in. Yes, I bet you are. Winnie. Mm. Pop's volume is noticeably louder than the other guys. Oh, sorry, I never picked up on his name. That's all right, Ace High Dan. How's this? Is it better? Yeah, is better? It better? Everybody can hear me? All right, Fair so t- today is one of the dreaded days of the year, which I can't stand. and It's Melanin Friday. It's Melanin <laughs> Friday, which is right behind Friday the 13th. Well, one of the nice things about it this year is that you don't have... A few things. You don't have the barbarian horde of consumers all flooding into Walmart. And as a result, you also don't have to worry about the obnoxious discussions of, you know, your your distant relatives at Thanksgiving dinner talking about how they're going to go to bed early on Thanksgiving night, get up at 4 a.m. so they can go stand in line yeah, with a bunch of schmucks to try to get a $200 television. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> I like TV, but I, I'm not I'm not risking that. I mean, I'll just pay. I'm a bachelor. I'll just pay the extra money. Well, we just shop online anyway. Yeah. 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 We, if we, there's one thing that the sweet and sour sniffles is not hurting, it's Amazon. No, no. <laughs> and we did do a video on male shopping rules and how men uh, shop and the patterns they follow. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was, that's a good one. That one, that one could be ripe for the remake pickings. The remake, if you know what I mean. we can add more to it because there's all kinds of crazy stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part of that one is just like, does this make my butt look big? Have you seen my package? Does it make it look ridiculous? Does it look swollen? Do I have elephantitis? <laughs> <laughs> Most men don't think like that. Uh, All right. So if anyone has any good Black Friday stories, give them in the comments because there's yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff one. going on. Like I refused to shop at Best Buy. I went to a black. Ah. I went to a Black Friday, about uh, fifteen years ago, at Best Buy, and and they were just such raging a holes. The people wor- working in the store. Well, I mean, would you want to be there? In, in all fairness, uh, they're, they're getting paid. Oh I mean, yeah, they're getting paid. It's but retail, it's just Re- saying, retail like, would sucks. They really want to be there? I wouldn't want to be there. I'm sorry, but the, <laughs> they lost. They, they lost a patron. I haven't been there back since. <laughs> so they, they drew the short straw. I'm sorry. You got to come in here. You got to come in. You got to be the bitch. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're 22. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I did have a good Thanksgiving. I had the usual stuff, you know, turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, Brussels sprouts. Um, I got me a pumpkin cheesecake from Costco. Uh huh. Oh, that stuff is so delicious. I'm not a pumpkin pie person. Neither am I. At all. But pumpkin cheesecake, yeah. 
Uh, oh, come on, man. I, I, I have a almost an entire pumpkin cheesecake left. And I know how much you like, you know, taking baked goods and basically injecting the fat directly into your ass. So if you want to lick a piece and stick it to your ass, because that's exactly where it's going, I'll be happy to hook you up and see if you like it. I'll try it, but I'm not a fan of any kind of pumpkin products. <laughs> never, never. Nah, you know, you're, uh, you're white, but you're not that white. I guess you know. This is the time of year when everything is freaking pumpkin flavored. White, whitey, whitey, whitey. Hello, my name is Whitey. This is my wife Whitney. She likes white things. I'm melanin challenged. I am a white man. I'm a little white man there. You know, I like to go up there with them barbarian hordes over there to Wally World there. You know, sit in line for them good deals on there. Get me a television for like three hundred dollars. I mean, I'm so uncultured. I thought that 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 those barbarian hordes they come from those Africana countries over there. I thought apartheid was laundry detergent. Damn. I'm just saying. That's deep. That balls deep. I'm just saying. Yeah, and we're responsible for all the evil in the world. I feel like I'm directly channeling my dad's relatives right now. <laughs> Lord, I apologize. Not that they're watching or anything. They would probably uh, watch for about five minutes, throw something, and then disavow my name to the entire family. Yeah, which I don't is know fine. him. I don't care. He doesn't exist in my mind. <laughs> it's like if... Uh, you're dead to me. If I'm driving and you're an a-hole on the road, the minute you go behind me, in my mind, you no longer exist. You're gone. What was that? Uh, it wasn't that like part of quantum physics? Somebody had a theory, like you know, and the, and the, if there's a cat in the box, it doesn't actually exist until you open the box and observe the cat. You know, up until I, I then, it's in like a, yeah. a, an interim state. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. But I mean, you know, what do you? Yeah, yeah there's I don't a lot know, of things out exist. there. I'm just saying. Look, every time they come up with some law and physics or what have you, a few years later, they come up with something that contradicts it. Of course. Yep. And they actually think that our universe is a large computer simulation. Oh, uh, was was that book that uh, kind of inspired the Matrix, the Simulacrum, or something like that? I don't know, but you know, they find they found you know code in in you know when they do the um, what, what is it the Malachi sequence? It's it's in the golden ratio where they have all the designs. It's no matter how how far you zoom in, it just goes on forever and ever. And uh, it's kind of creepy. It's creepy. <laughs> and we got uh, some uh, some pumpkin comments here. Okay, the, what do we got? Uh, Pulse Kebab, welcome back, good sir. He says, pumpkin pie ice cream is awesome. Oh. Never had it myself. And then over here on Twitch, we have a guy saying that pumpkin cheesecake, I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, neither did Pop, so you're in good company. Oh, well, we also need to let everyone know that we're still in the bad boy box. We can't yeah. accept super chats, but you can... Uh, Go directly to was it PayPal through uh, Streamlabs? Yes, I will. Uh, I will actually repost that again. That link. Streamlabs offers their own tip jar that goes directly to a redonkulous PayPal. So if you guys would like your equivalent of a super chat today, there it is in the comments <laughs> right now. Streamlabs.com slash redonkulous pop slash just the tip. <laughs> because. Apparently, we have to have a minimum of 1,000 subscribers yeah. and 4,000 hours of watched content. Yeah, which means that we're going to have to spend the next few days probably spamming some old Lair videos out to the four corners of the internet. Well, if we actually get this put up and they don't flag it, it's, it'll be, two, it'll be <laughs> two hours long. Two hours long, and then if enough people watch it, then we can make, make Here's that hoping. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens. It's at this point, YouTube is it's a wonderful tool, but it's it's just like any tool that you know you go you th you, th you see it on TV and you think it's really cool, and then you go and buy it and you figure out that the instructions don't really tell you exactly what's going on. And next thing you know, you're losing a finger and you need to like you know <laughs> you need to have a buddy fashion out a tourniquet. <laughs> but all you got around the house is like your wife or your girlfriend, so she tries to make you a tourniquet you know made out of tampons, and that doesn't work. No, so no. next thing you know, gangrene, gangrene, uh, possibly death, yeah, yeah, you fail. Can, you can lower your <laughs> blood pressure to zero. <laughs> And evict yourself from your meat suit. That happens. Evicting from the meat suit. Oh, Dr. Fi donated $5 on the Super Chat. Didn't that chair or seat you usually find outside retail stores used to be known as the husband's chair? Fascinating. I didn't know that. All right. 
I, I thought that Story was the time. seat that was right outside the waiting room because you refused to be seen anywhere holding your wife's purse. No, oh, I, well, hang on. <laughs> Story time. I used to take my daughters to Forever 21 in the Oakland Mall, and uh, I would spend about two hours standing around the fitting room area with all the other dudes. Dudes. And literally, you're like, you're standing there, and you don't want to make co- eye contact with the other dudes. But every once in a while, you look at them, you're like, and they, you make eye contact, you're like, you too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm stuck here. Yeah, I want to buy a bunch of useless bullshit to wear one time just so I get like a couple smiles. And I'm like, I feel your pain, bro. Maybe we'll get a drink on the way out and I can drive home drunk. <laughs> and maybe if I'm really lucky, I'll get a haphazard, love you, dad, on their way out the door. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't <laughs> happen that often. No, you get, stop breathing, dad. I know. Your nose whistles. Yeah. Well, I've had my, my my nose busted like five times. You've had your nose busted more than Rocky Balboa. Five times. Five <laughs> times. And uh, it's messed up. I need to get it fixed. I remember I went to a doctor. Uh, I was like 29. And he's like, are you still competing? I'm like, yeah. He goes, all right. When you're done competing, come back and we'll fix your nose. Until then, it's not even worth it. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Because the way he explained it, like they... They they break it and then they oh, and then they pack it full of cotton for like four days. Of course, oh no, I don't know. That doesn't sound appetizing to me at all. No, no, no. But I'll tell you, the first time that my nose got busted, it bled a lot and it hurt. The last time, it bled a little bit and it didn't hurt so much. You get used to it. What was the uh, what was the attack that broke your nose? Uh, the last time, the first time. Oh, that was in football. Oh, okay. I was going for a tackle, and this running back was really good. He stopped on a dime and, and like turned and brought his his leg up, Ooh. went right under my face mask, <laughs> broke it. Ooh. I, I made the tackle, but you know I was covered in blood and jacked up, and it is what it is. A walking biohazard. Well, you know, football back in the day used to be uh, a little more rough and tumble than it is now. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Now I was like, are you okay? Yeah, you no, he- no helmet on helmet You want a contact? participation trophy and a sandwich wing? Yeah. No, no there was none of that. <laughs> so what, what, what do you want to attack first? Well, first of all, I, I have to ask if anybody out there is actually watching this from jail. Because, you know, you're not allowed to have anyone in your home for Spanksgiving this year. Yeah. Obviously. So, I mean, it, it, that's totally, you know, you're going to kill grandma you know, it's not safe. That's Never mind, you know, that every single one of these orders has been smacked down by their own state courts. It's a blatant violations of the first and fourth. Well, yeah, plus, you know, our, in Michigan, our governor already got spanked down once. And now she's going right back to it. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand. What, I just don't get it. I, I say thank God that she's had articles of impeachment just, you know, raised yeah. against her. But... To the conservatives up there that are in the state legislature, please, for the love of God, do not cuck out going after this woman. Yeah, pull your testicles down, man. Let them drop. I know that do you're terrified something. that the media is going to call you sexist, misogynist, woman haters. Do your damn job. Do what you were hired to do. Yeah. Check Govern. and balance. Govern. Ugh. No, no, we've lost Bunch so many crap. small businesses and... There's people whose lives are going to be ruined for, forever. Yeah. Uh, what's his nuts? Over in uh, New York, Cuomo, SCOTUS just weighed in, slapped down his Thanksgiving restrictions and his uh, restrictions on organized religion in the state as a whole. But what really blows my mind is that it was a 5-4 decision. That what? should have been a 9-0 decision. Yes. And, and isn't it great that you've got state governors, Democrats, literally going after Jews, calling the other guy a Nazi? Wow. The irony is so thick. I mean, that is the kind of irony only truly corrupt globalist money can buy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That is the example right there. Irony. Wow. Oh, and the really screwed be some up jokes are, there. Like all these freaking Biden voters, they just don't see it. It's like, oh, okay. So you don't like capitalism. You think that the, the entire system needs to be torn down and overhauled. But you have absolutely no problem throwing in everything you have behind multinational billionaires who want to police free speech on the Internet, close down small businesses during a pandemic so that only the multinational billionaire companies can reap any profits yep. during and, this whole time continue period. continue to exist. And, yeah. 
Meanwhile, I mean, what was it? Uh, uh, Sticks, Hex, and Hammer was talking about how there was like a, a dairy in Vermont. I think it's called Thomas's Dairy. Stood for 100 years. And it was in a state with like less than 1,000 cumulative cases. I think right now it's got 76, maybe, yeah. like at last count. And he's shutting down their economy for the winter. They are a winter tourist attraction. It would be like if the mayor in Jaws was like, nah, fuck these people. <laughs> <laughs> There's a shark in the water here. Bye. You know. Yeah, go to it. Go to it. What are you going to do? <laughs> Amity is a summer town. We need summer dollars. Yeah, Vermont is a winter state. They need winter dollars. Yeah. Now they're not going to get them. No, no. And uh, I don't understand why we have individuals who are voted into power who don't understand economics and so forth. I just don't get it. It's bad news bears. It is. Risk reward, time equals money. You know, you gotta you gotta have somebody making the widgets and they go into the system and they keep the whole system healthy and needs to keep working. You shut any part of it down. Jail. You're gonna have a lot of problems. It really is just it's hilarious how many people hilarious, sad, kind of scary, how many people have just fallen in lockstep yes behind this i'm i'm shocked because you know all in the name of safety of course you know i mean was something that has a 99 percent survival rate yeah and it's not like most of the people that i know who are just falling into lockstep behind this were alive when 9 11 happened and they know about the aftermath all of this stuff that was railroaded through Congress all in the name of safety, but really it was just capitalizing on fear. That's exactly what the Democrats do. I mean, and <laughs> the really funny part is that it's always the same, where they just they figure out a way to name something in such a way where if you dare to question it, yep. then it's, it's an Easy, you're, you know, public con- relations you're nightmare. A, a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. Oh, oh, you don't support the Patriot Act? Well, then you're unpatriotic. Now get the hell out of here. Oh, you don't support a woman's right to choose? And, and I didn't say anything about that. I said I'm not all about the whole, you know, disemboweling and ripping things out in pieces kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I don't know, man. Like, I, I listen to uh, a lot of the videos in regards to 9-11. And uh, I believe there's a, a group of architects who did a report about the 9-11. And they just flat out called it. They're like, listen, there's manufactured thermite. Yeah. Building 7, seven fell at free fall speed, which means its infrastructure was destroyed at the same time. And it wasn't even hit by a plane. Allegedly. Right? This yeah. is all allegedly, right? Alleg- we can't yeah. prove any of this. I'm just saying there's no listen, conspiracy theory. I'm gonna, you know, I'm a realist, like man. like your ex-wife. I'm a realist. Allegedly. And uh, I just, just something went on there that was not a, you know, we did, a, I did a video about it a few years back. Yeah, well, these it's are all not things, kosher. It's not kosher. No, I mean, these are all things that we know, you know, because it really, it's just, it's common sense. And in Detroit, actually, I think we even had a better stance as far as looking at that with a critical eye, because I think not even a year before that, the Hudson Building downtown was demolitioned yeah. and it was a huge media circus you know, like it was on every channel yeah, so we got to watch a building go down in free fall from a controlled demolition very recently it was still fresh in our brains so when that happened and i was like that doesn't really look right i know it, but it i saw that I'm like, I'm like i saw uh, the seven number seven building come down i'm yeah. like as soon as i saw that i'm like nope I was like what what happened? Did, did somebody nearby like light a fart on fire or something? I was like, what the hell? Okay, did, did God Himself sneeze? But my thing <laughs> is like the thermite. The, I mean, that was all over the city, and it's undisputed. There's scientific. This is a scientific fact. Yeah. They found the thermite. How the how the hell did they get there? Well, you know, maybe them uh, some weird little elven men or them them, them far right conspiracy the nuts that they went and they planted it there so that they could yeah. sow they could sow discord and 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 distrust in our institutions. We listen. I'm just going to tell you right now that uh, that whole thing did doesn't sit well with me. Just like the the selection doesn't sit well with me. Um. No, there's some there's some crazy shit going on in the background, and we we need to we need to fix but it. But of course, there's no proof of any wrongdoing except no. for the thousands upon thousands of affidavits and proof. Well, they have of, video. Know, 
The video? They they found actual physical ballots that were uncounted. Uh, they found ballots in, in the in the trash. Yep. Um, there's Sworn video testimony that under like especially in this state, is if you file an official affidavit yes. and it turns out that you have perjured yourself, you can serve fifteen years in prison. Th- well, I don't know if it's that much. Yes. Yeah. Is it? It's up to fifteen years in prison. So uh, th- this is not like, you know, Christine Ford going in front of Congress and talking about a gangbang that never happened. Right. With with people that are never going to hold her feet to the fire. This is these are sworn affidavits. If they lie in a Democrat run state with a vengeful bitch for a governor, yeah, you're it going is not to gonna jail. go well for them. Jail. Jail. All kinds of jail. Oh my God. Yeah, you are right. Plus they, they have video and I don't the, know. Bu- I, th- this is supposed to be an open and transparent process, right? Yes. This is supposed to be the most open, transparent process. And they're boarding up windows. Correct. They're know. throwing people out. And, of course, the same people who have spent the last four years saying, well, Russia, Russia stole the election with Facebook ads. I'm still not sure how exactly how that is supposed to work. No. But it was considered hashtag resist and orange man bad. It's patriotic. You, you know, question the system, blah, 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 for the last four years. Yep. And now all of a sudden that it's gone their way, it's, well, oh, you're just sour grapes. You know, there's no proof. Yeah. Well, that- no, no. I mean, I mean, the thing is, is if you have affidavits, you have it on video, they've actually found balance. There's proof of, of something going on. Yeah. And we know of at least one election that was actually flipped by the Dominion voting system Correct. specifically. 6,000 votes. The dude had actually already called in and conceded to his opponent, and then it turned out he won. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I, I remember hearing that news. Plus, there's a bunch of uh, statistical gurus out there that put me to shame that actually looked at the data, and they're like, this is impossible. Yeah. This you have just... to completely discard the law of mathematical averages to accept the results of it, the election. Or mathematical chaos. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's just, it, I mean, when you look at all of the results... There is a calculated curve in there that doesn't exist if it's all random. I think it's the the actual count where, you know, after they stopped counting, you know, and yes. supposedly until 9 a.m. and then resumed in the middle of the night without telling anybody after boarding up windows and secretly bringing in shit in coolers and wagons, 600,000 votes came in. Wow. All of them for Biden. 3,000 Trump. That's, That's it. It's impossible. You know, if you're going to try to, if you're going to cheat that bad, maybe not try to make it look so obvious. No, no that's insane. <laughs> that is insane. And that and that brings us right into the... I mean, that's like, that would be like if, you know, OJ, you know, allegedly, you know, storms the castle and then just, you know, like savagely murders the two of them and then goes right to 7-Eleven with the knife in his hand and he's just covered in blood spatter and he's like, y'all got some, uh, y'all got some Funyuns and some... Uh, yeah. Can I have some paper so, towel and I, I don't know what you're please? talking about. I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just wanted some Funyuns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, I, I don't know, man. Okay, now I'll jump in my white Bronco and head for the border. <laughs> All right. Now, I know there's... Uh, this I did a video about the the server in Frankfurt. Yes, yeah. that one came out what three or four days ago. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, that came out on Monday. On Monday. That was the new Lair video for the week. If you guys did not see it, it's because <laughs> YouTube in jail. Yeah, we're we're, in, we're um, in a, I'm not sure. We're in bad boy jail. I, th- I think it got posted to the Grunt Speaks channel. Um, if if it has not, it'll be coming out Monday. Alt Tech, MegTow TV, Brideon. We're on Rumble now. Bit shoot. Well, we all, have, I saw it on Odyssey. We, it's also on Odyssey. So everywhere on all tech right now. Yes. But if, basically, if they can post videos there, we're there. Yeah. And you know when I when I look at this uh, crap that's going on, I'm looking at it through a intel analyst military mindset. I'm not a civilian looking at it. Now this is not this is not sour grapes just because no. the guy that we wanted to win is getting the shaft is getting the shaft. Yeah. It, well, if it had been the other way, I would be sitting here wondering what the hell is going now, on. Now, you because... remember the conspiracy story that came out that uh, bin Laden really wasn't killed and it was a stand Oh, yeah, yeah, and... yeah. Okay, now, when that happened, when, when you know, I remember I was I was in uh, ANOC. No, not ANOC. I was in Battlestaff School, and he got whacked. 
And I'm like, uh, and they, they talked about a helicopter had crashed, but nobody had died. <laughs> and I remember, I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> okay, in the next 30 days, there's going to be a big accident somewhere, and a bunch of dudes are going to die, and enough that would so fill a helicopter. And sure as shit, 20, was it 27 days later, a Chinook got whacked and everyone got smoked? And I'm like, yep. There we go. So, listen. Uh, it was just kind of, it was just like when Epstein got arrested and, and put in prison. Like, yeah, someone's going to die. die. Yeah, yeah, the only one who was shocked about his uh, his suicide was him. <laughs> a little bit. Like, <laughs> I'm killing myself. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, oh, hi, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> so they're saying that uh, at the server that uh, there was a firefight. There was a firefight. Between the direct, uh, the Army and what is the DIA, Defense in, you know, in, Intelligence Agency, yeah, against the, the DIA DOD. and some of their... Uh, Here, I'll put that up on their the screen for you guys. Um, this is not something that has been covered in the lamestream media. No. In fact, even though this is an international story with Germany, we spoke with one of our fans who we're in touch with who's in, I believe, in the Netherlands right now, but is from Germany. Yes. And it and was just, mentioned on the news. But it was a blip. He said it was mentioned, but it was just a blip. That was yeah, it. It was never touched And then it. after we talked to him, you went on to like Al Jazeera and a bunch of other sites. Did yep. you find anything? Uh, there was just a... A few mentions of it, but that's that, that's all. But you got to figure if a firefight's going to go down, okay, it's not like uh, they notify the police and they cord on the place off. Yeah. No, they needed to get in there as quickly as possible so they wouldn't zero out the, the servers. Mm -hmm. So they just stormed it. Yeah. Okay. And, I, you know, it, they're saying five uh, Army guys got whacked and one CIA guy got uh, yeah. smoked. Well, we'll read the article, but uh, yeah. long story short, if you guys have not watched the newest Lair video on Alt Tech, there was a Dominion voting server that was... In C Germany? Yeah, in Germany, apparently CIA owned and operated, and it was seized by the U.S. military. Correct. And of course, this has been debunked by the lamestream media, but... It did happen. Nevertheless, it did happen. It did happen. And now, I'm going to just... I'm gonna, now, this is common sense speaking here. All right. If this is an installation run by the CIA, there is no way you're storming that without some people getting shot. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. But they totally work for us, right? We listen. I mean, if that's going on, then there's going to be we're in for we're in for a rough ride in the next five to ten years. It's going to be interesting. Here, I will bring up this uh, article for you, gentlemen. And just kind of walk you through it. I'm not sure how well the, yeah, the you quality read I'm going to hit the restroom real quick. Through. Okay, Pop is going to go take a piss, apparently. <laughs> Situation update, November 27th. DOD versus CIA firefight in Frankfurt as covert war against the deep state rages across the globe. Oh, it's good times. Can you smell the conspiracy theories? Let's check it out. At this very minute, a covert war is raging across the globe, pitting Trump's DOD and DIA Defense Intelligence Agency against black hat deep state factions running the CIA. The good news is, Trump is winning. I don't even know how I can keep that up. As you know by now, the DOD launched a raid on the CIA-run server firm in Frankfurt, Germany, to secure servers that contain proof of CIA interference with the 2020 election, i.e. backdoor manipulations of election results via Dominion voting machines. But new information is now surfacing that indicates there was a firefight at the server farm facility involving U.S. Army Special Forces engaging with CIA-trained paramilitary units that were flown in from Afghanistan in an emergency effort to defend the facility. One CIA officer was killed during the firefight, and he is now being reported across the mainstream media as being killed in Somalia. Five U.S. Army soldiers were also killed, and they are being explained away as dying in a helicopter crash in Egypt. Despite the deaths, the servers were successfully acquired by the DOD, and those servers were turned over to President Trump's private intelligence group, which is now once again led by General Michael Flynn, recently pardoned and now allowed to process top-secret information since his security clearance has been restored. Good. Here's where it gets good. All right. 
Sidney Powell is about to roll out expert witnesses in the Georgia and Michigan lawsuits. One of these witnesses has been handed details of the vote theft, which were required through two means. Number one, the Kraken Cyber Warfare Program run by the DOD. And Booyah! Two, and two, information run in the, found in the servers, which were acquired during the multiple raids. There were also server farm raids in Barcelona and Toronto, we are told. One of these witnesses is Dr. Keshavars hyphen Nia, a well-known cybercrimes investigator who has a long history of working with U.S. military counterintelligence, as well as the NSA and the CIA. He has now been offered he has now offered sworn statements to Sidney Powell, which can be viewed at this link. We may have to take a look at those. Oh yeah, yeah. They do summarize. His statements include. I have previously discovered major exploitable vulnerabilities in DVS and ESNS that permit a nefarious operator to perform sensitive functions via its built-in covert back door. We, uh, we know all about the back door yeah. over here of Redonculus. I'm just yeah, saying. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the back door nah, enab <laughs> enables a smooth operator to access the uh, to perform system updates and testing via the internet without detection. However, it can also be used to conduct illicit activities such as shifting votes, deleting votes, or adding votes in real time. I conclude with high uh -huh. confidence that the election 2020 data was altered in all battleground states, resulting in hundreds of thousands of votes that were cast for President Trump to be transferred to Vice President Biden. And so the circle is complete. DOD forces deploy cyber warfare weapons, the Kraken, as well as kinetic troops, special forces under the U.S. Army to acquire physical servers. All the information derived from these operations is extracted by DIA forensic analysts. It is then handed over to various expert witnesses who are prepared to testify under oath, resulting in the courts nullifying the fraudulent vote manipulations in the swing states. In a perfect world where courts and judges can't be bought, yes. sold, and paid for. Yes. This is how Trump gets to 300 plus electoral votes and secures a second term as president in a perfect world. I, you know, I, I would just say that if this is all true and it goes before the Supreme Court, they just nullify the entire election and, and either redo it or do it the other way through the House. Was the House of Representatives? Yes. And in which case, from what I understand, if it does go to the House, individual representatives do not vote. It is simply by state. And in that case, I think the vote would be like 38 to 12 as far as Republicans to Democrat control. Yep. So at that point, it would be a deadlock. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're cheating. Well, yeah, they're cheating. Either way you look at this, we have entered constitutional crisis territory. Yes. There's absolutely no way around it. And it's only going to get dirtier like, from if here. If you have two brain cells that rub together... And like I watched the election. I turned it off at roughly at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And I woke up in the morning, and it was radically different. A little bit. I was just like, there's, there's absolutely no way. There's no way. Yeah. No. I mean, it was totally, uh, listen, you know, I, I don't like to be that guy. And I keep saying all this bad stuff is going to happen. but And you always say, I hope I'm wrong. I, I do. I don't want gut. it to happen. I hope I'm wrong. But, you know, I have to call it as I see it, and this is very, very bad. Yeah. We've gotten to the point now where just because of propaganda alone, you've got half the country believing that the election is over when it's not. It's not, no. So, like I said, in a perfect world, we all know what the outcome is going to be, which is that, you know, all of these fraudulent votes will get thrown out. Trump gets a second term. The globalists throw a hissy fit, and then we spend another four years listening to propaganda about a coup, blah, blah, blah. But at this point, the coup is coming from the side that's calling the other side. Well, it's, that's how it always is, though. It, yeah, they yeah. always accuse you of doing what they're doing. Oh, Trump is a Russian asset. Oh, never mind all that uranium that I signed over to the Russians yeah. while I was Secretary well, of State. Like, like, never mind that. I mean, I listen, I took an oath many times when I enlisted all, like, 33 years worth of oaths. None of them expired. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. I had to laugh because when you're talking, sometimes I glance over at the comments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the man with the golden voice, James Von Maxwell, <laughs> he's in here. And he's like, huh, why does Pop have to get up to pee? His manhood is miles long. I was like, yeah, he just he just strings his dick along the floor and just lays it in the toilet. <laughs> so <he> just <laughs> no, man. No, no, no. When you get older, you got prostate problems. You got to pee. That's just the way it is. You said it, not me. Because you got the butt donut in the car. Yeah, yeah but that's for my back. That's <laughs> nah, a butt donut. It's for my back. 
Aren't all donuts butt donuts, though, when you really think about it? I Have I used it as a butt donut on very long trips? Yes, but usually I use it on my lower back. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to anybody. That's yeah, just exactly the truth here. My kids make fun of me over like, Dan's got a butt donut. Shut up! <laughs> just shut up now. I called it a butt donut, too, as soon as I first saw it. I was like, hey, what the oh, you got a butt donut. <laughs> Fantastic. How old are you again? <laughs> but, you know, I, I took like a champ. I was yeah. just like, that's funny. Let's go. <laughs> just like when I put your head in a wedding dress. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. That was my face in the wedding dress. Your face in the wedding dress, either way. I had okay. six of my NCOs in the room. They're like, ah, ha, ha. And for like two minutes, I was just like, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's a good burn. No, I, I can't get mad. Well, at least I didn't take the Photoshop picture and like send it out to your unit so you can, you know, just walk down the hallway that's, and then stuck fine. up on the cork board for the announcements or some shit. I don't care. I wouldn't care. Either. No. I mean, would have been funny. Listen, anyone who's ever served with me knows that I take a good burn. And, like, if I'm going to dish out practical jokes and they get me back, I almost never get pissed. I'm just like, okay. Like, for instance, we're doing a practical joke war Story when, I was, time. when I was in the 414 Civil Affairs. And uh, one of the supply sergeants was going on vacation on a cruise with his wife. So I come in there and I, I fill up all of his drawers. With shredder confetti. <laughs> and then I had a bunch of, uh, so, uh, what was it, uh, the clippings from the pencils, shavings. I have oh, in yeah, a box. Yeah. You open up, it falls down. So I'm in there, and he's doing some stuff. He opens it up and goes, oh, Pop. He's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and then he looks at me, and he opens up the thing, and the, the, the confetti falls down. He's like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he like a few days later, apparently he sneaks into my office Puts my phone, the talk part and the ear part, dips it in uh, in stamping ink. Oh. And he calls me, and I pick it up, and I start pop, and I hear him laughing, and I look, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, mean, I, I don't even get mad. I, I just like, flawless victory. <laughs> and I walk. I, have to go, I literally spent like 20 minutes trying to wash it off. But I have, for two days, I had a red box on my mouth. <laughs> And everybody's was like, that the color of the ink was red? It was red. Oh, and my man. ear was all red, too, but, you know. Uh, you can explain a red ear. It's kind of hard to you get a perfect red, like square, like on your face. Where you good? That was a good one, man. That was that's really good. And that was Star Morgan. Love that guy. I was picturing, I was picturing black ink in my head, which would have been arguably worse because no. you'd have explained a big black box around your mouth. There was another one I did. Is uh, I filled this dude's truck full of uh, packing peanuts. Nice. No, no. I I, I like literally he had this sunroof and it was a it was a pickup truck. Oh, that makes that so much easier. I literally dump like four bags of this. Sh- I fill it up to like literally halfway. <laughs> he opens it up. Ah, God, God, and he gets it. He drives off, and it, like the wind is blowing. It looks like a popcorn maker, <laughs> and it's blowing out. And he- <laughs> That's awesome. I remember I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there like from the roof, going, "That is great, dude. We could do." Just a series of comedic shorts all based on the true pranks that you oh, and man. these other army dudes just all pulled on each other. Oh, no, that would no. be fantastic. That was still some good stuff right there. <laughs> they got me back from that one, though. I'm trying to remember all oh, they stink bomb my car. We definitely got to do a skit in the Pringles can full of shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Come on now. At, at this point, that is infamous. That is biblical. It, it's it, only, it, it is enshrined in the memories listen, of anybody who has watched the show. It only was really bad. Because he was at sea, and it was in his mail bo- cubby. Well, you're saying that it wouldn't have been bad if he had just come back and found a Pringles can. If he opened shit. it, like, oh, Pop mailed me shit, and he threw it away. And then he would have sent me a letter. It would have been he, him and me. But his chain of command got involved, and IG, and, and it, you know, it was bad. It was bad. Because it's the fact it, that it was, like, seeping it out. It seeped the- down <laughs> and, like, boxes. contaminated people's mail and stunk the whole room up. It was... Dude, I just didn't think it through. I should have put a plastic bag in there. I should have, but I didn't. Well, mm. best laid plans, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. That was that was one of the nastier ones I did. You know what they say about Pringles? Yeah. Once you pop, the fun don't stop. No, and I I can remember. It is fitting. I remember this. I had an LT that really pissed me off, and like I I cut out like naked pictures of dudes holding cocks and I, I put them in his bible i put them in his diary i put them on the back of his map i mean i hit him in his, in his wallet it was hilarious <laughs> disregard the penis in the corner yeah that was that guy too 
Yeah, I remember the town commander's like, uh, you know, LT, is there a problem with you and your men? Oh, no, they're just messing with me. <laughs> well, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he was a good dude. That's a lot of cock, I'm just saying. No, he was a good dude. He, he, he retired a lieutenant colonel. He did a good, he did good. That's good. Yeah. All right. I think uh, with that, we're just going to take a quick break here, simply because... Just little background of my life for the past month. Not that anyone really cares, but it, because I know everybody's going to be wondering why the hell we're going to be promoting, you know, another YouTube creator's content during the live stream. Uh, Donovan Sharp, he was on one of our live streams about, about well, a month first, or so ago. First, uh, first of all, his shit is is wired tight. Yes, he, I've he watched knows some of stuff. it. No, no, that shit is wired tight. Yeah, p- people can say what they want to about him. They can say that he's brash. They can say, you know, so that, that he, he's you no, know, he's not, you know, red pill enough or what have you. Because a lot of the MGTOW dudes like to get, you know, up in arms about him. He's a good dude. He's treated me very well. Back in October, I drove all the way out to his studio, which is not a short drive. It's ten nine hours, hours, nine and a half. And I like spent that. four days there, filming this entire series of online courses. Mm-hmm. And I have spent the last month of my life cutting this stuff together yep. after you know i farmed it out to some dudes to do vfx work because it's all green screen and everything and then the official launch date for all of this is today it's on sale now and he has made us affiliates on it okay so this is uh called womanese volumes one through three on sale as of today take a look Aren't you sick and tired of being tricked by bad girls pretending to be good girls? Who isn't, right? Crack the female code with Womanese 101, what she says versus what she means. Learn to tell the difference between a woman who wants to sleep with you and a woman who is trying to friend zone you. Master the ability to determine whether or not she's cheating, thinking about cheating, or setting you up to dump you for the guy she's cheating with. Gain the ability to recognize over 400 of the most common phrases women use to mislead and manipulate men. Separate yourself from 97% of men by acquiring the superpower of translating female communication with all three volumes of Womanese. Sign up to be notified of its release in the link below. All right. It's a month of my life, bro. (laughs) And I do have some examples from the course that are actually really funny. It kind of... It goes back and forth. There's some really funny business in there. Most of it's, you know, pretty informative. And, you know, we got the, the three models in there that we're working with. It, basically, you have the, uh, the the good girl side who tells you what she thinks you want to hear. And then you have the bad girl side that tells you the unmitigated truth. Uh-huh. Sometimes that's just hilarious. And <laughs> there, for one of the sections of the video, I had to do just the good girl side, but then caption the bad girl side uh-huh. and sometimes they're only on screen for like two seconds and sometimes the, the the truth side is like a three second three to four second explanation so i had to come up with like really funny ways to shorten it up just to kind of get the same point across like one line was i work at a call center and then, and then and the caption says it's a booty call center <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going to throw on some examples for you guys uh, there's a link in the description if any of you guys are interested we're going to check this out That's a red flag. That turns me on. If it gets the attention of law enforcement, it gets the attention of young, hot females. Red flags are turn-ons for girls, guys, and that's all there is to it. If a woman says XYZ is a red flag, it means she's turned on by him. What are your plans for Thanksgiving? I need a boyfriend, so I'm not alone for the holidays. Women ask this at the beginning of what's known as cuffing season, which lasts from Thanksgiving until spring break. Here's how the cycle goes. They'll hook up with random dudes all summer long, but because they don't want to be alone for the holidays and Valentine's Day, they latch on to the guy they like the most. Then about a week or so before spring break, they'll tell you, we need to talk, rinse and repeat. Standard operating procedure for today's women. Don't you trust me? I'm trying to cheat and you're making it so hard. When a woman needs room to cheat, she will shame you by asking if you trust her. The answer to this shit test is, I don't trust anybody. If we don't have trust, we don't have anything. I'm cheating on you and you are too close to finding out. This is one of the most often used tactics in the female cheater's playbook. 
Any woman who says this to you is absolutely fucking around on you. Walk away immediately and do not look back. I don't have sex unless I'm in a relationship. You don't turn me on enough to make me want to sleep with you. Girls fuck guys they're not in relationships with all the time. What women are doing here when they make this statement is trying to extract resources out of you without actually having to sleep with you. Meanwhile, they're getting butt fucked every night by the guy who couldn't give less of a shit about her. Pun definitely intended. <laughs> savage. It is savage. That isn't is it? savage, man. We were having so much fun filming this because a lot of these girls, they they didn't get the script or anything before they came out. So they're saying these lines, and there were a couple of them who just flat out admitted, like, yeah, I've totally used this line before. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, one of them was like, well, I, I had crappy signal. You know, I'm sorry, I had crappy signal. Meanwhile, they're, you know, getting bent over the dumb cumster out behind the bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's some funny stuff, man. We nah, had a lot yeah. of fun doing it. And uh, apparently I'm going to be going back in January mm -hmm. to do volumes, either I think volume four, it might be boss, possibly volumes four and five, because he's got like a whole plan for the next year. For this wow. Stuff. I like that. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. It's, it's definitely some funny stuff. That stuff is, he's, that stuff is wired tight, man. Yeah. Yeah, it, the game was wired tight. But there was uh, there's some things that I recommended to him for just tightening up the game for the next go round. But it, I mean, it, we it covered some of that stuff when we did the video of chick speak. Yeah, because you know we basically tell you like what a chick says, and then what that really means. Yeah, chick speak. Yeah, because like, usually I, when you're especially in a like a dating environment when you're talking to women, they they almost never tell you what they really mean because most of Female communication is about saving face, you know, keeping things on an even keel. And that can only work that way for so long before you finally realize, you know, I really should be looking at your actions instead of what you say. Because these two things, yes. they don't really mesh. I need space <laughs> without you in it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, like, we need to talk means I, I'm cheating on you and now I'm finally going to dump you. Or, because the, or, the monkey branching process is complete. Or she's confident she has the other P-Nice lined up. Yeah. 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 Women never end a relationship without having another one lined up first. You ever notice that? Um, Not in time. <laughs> <laughs> not in time. Always after the fact. You're like, damn it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, now I'm... I'm been through the ringer and i'll be like oh yeah yeah well especially when you're young and dick thinking you're just like oh, okay well, well you give me more like, than nowadays i don't ever put a lot of faith in it i'm like yeah well you know like i, I dated uh, like two or three chicks just quickly when i was in new york for five and a half years yeah and uh the minute i'd get that we need to talk are you like okay bye, -bye. Right. well obviously um there's something here that's not working out i don't want to get into it um, I understand I don't own you, it's just my turn, and now exactly. my turn is over, and I leave, and that's it. And they get really upset about it. Oh, yeah, tell you, me about it. You don't it. let I, them I have any power. You're like, oh, my, I'm done. All right, can I? Can you clock me out so I can get paid? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite incidents of all time, um, after my horse chick left, I was just kind of you know playing the field, whatever. I hooked up with this little ginger. Yeah, James, I know you're listening. Because he loves the gingers. Gingers. Named, named Megan. Uh-huh. And we hung out use, a couple. We, not went, use out, real we names. went out on one date. You should not use real names, allegedly. I'm not using the last name. All right. It's just fine. And, you know, the, the rest of the time it was just watching movies. Uh -huh. Chill? And chill. Yeah, Netflix and chill. Yeah. Which is uh, Kiaka hitting inner lips and labia. Correct. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of friction testing. Yeah, so it was just a couple of times. She was a dead fish, so... Uh, I hate that. And then all of a sudden, she just hits me up on OK Stupid, and she's like, well, you know, I don't really think you know, if this is going, I probably shouldn't hang out anymore. OK. I'll oh, what, that's it? Yeah, that's it. That's fine, you know. Have a, have a good life, you know. Have fun. Kind of. Maybe a little. Yeah, not so much. Seven minutes of fun. 18 yeah. years on the run. I've had a lot of women <laughs> get mad when they're like, so what do you think of me? And I'm like, eh. eh. What do you mean, eh? 
<laughs> like, I could take it or leave it. Really, even when they're ending things with you, they still want you to be emotionally invested. I don't get that. I, I don't understand it either. It's like, like you were not entitled to my hurt feelings. You weren't entitled to my good feelings, a lot of my hurt feelings. Yeah. I left all the good feelings between your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I cleaned oh. him up with a Kleenex. Well, uh, I'm re- we refer to that as fail sauce. Fail sauce. <laughs> <laughs> My penis is named fail. Therefore, anything that comes out of it is fail sauce. Fail sauce. <laughs> no. That fail sauce is expired. It's a little chunky. <sighs> All right, let's get back to this whole server farm incident. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting uh, question we got right here. Joey what? Jojo. Is asking, what have you heard about the quarantine camps going on in C- C- Canada, Kanakistan? Uh, well, first of all, I don't have a lot of intel coming from Kanakistan. C- <laughs> so um, I really don't know. Um, I do know that in the United States, there is somewhere between 120 and 150 some odd FEMA camps that are inactive. Hmm. And those things are stocked with burial, um, mausoleums, body bags, all kinds of just horrible shit. Sounds like fun. You know, and the, remember, uh, it was Jesse the Body Venture was the governor of Minnesota? Yes. He did a series where he actually went on camera and visited a lot of these places. They do exist. You know, Ilhan Omar is lucky that Jesse is still not the governor of Minnesota because oh. he wouldn't play that shit. If, if the riots in Minnesota happened while Jesse Ventura was governor... Would he would have, have been going out into the streets personally to body slam people. I would, would have, have paid glorious. money to see that. I'm like, no, no, I want to watch this shit go down. Oh, in a perfect world, man. Yeah. That would have been awesome. It would have like, been just like the running man. He just shows up. And like, oh! Yep, that's exactly what will happen. <laughs> but anyway. Um, the server stuff. The ser- the oh, we're off. We got off in the weeds. Yeah, we're off in the weeds. All right, the server stuff. Now. Uh, I did look on Al Jazeera. I did look on the dark web. I really can't find any definitive, uh, you know, uh, sources other than that one blurb that there was the raid. Yeah. But common sense tells me that uh, there more than likely, I would say there's an eighty percent chance there was a firefight of some type. Well, it definitely seems like it's very legit. And one of the things, because in the article they did reference uh, particular sworn statements. And if you take a look at this here, you will see that there is, although they did misspell the word declaration, that's a, that's a little suspect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this, this definitely looks like a legal document of some kind. It's got all the legalese in it. So, yeah. I don't I mean, know. I, I, I don't know if anybody can cross check this whole case number business that's up here at the top, but I mean, Sydney Powell, just from what I know of her, is not the kind of person who just spews Play, off at the mouth or plays around. Yeah, if she's got something and she says that she has so much evidence, I believe her words were, "It's like drinking from a fire hose." Wow. She's not really prone to hyperbole. And if this is the one occasion where she chooses to be, it's not really going to reflect well on her career later if it turns out she's full of shit and she's just bluffing. But that would be completely out of her character yeah, to do that. Yeah, she's never done that before. I mean, typically if you have somebody that, that bluffs, they do it. There's a there's always a pattern of, hist- of behavior. Yeah. Uh, I'm not getting that from her. So I, I don't personally know her. I only know part of her reputation as being, you know, straight up not – not fuck around kind of person. Yeah. But well, other than that, I don't know. Past behavior is a pretty damn good indicator of future behavior. And that's Correct. why we all knew that Johnny Depp didn't lay a hand on Amber Heard. I'm just saying. No, he didn't. <laughs> he, got, he got the raw deal on that you, one. You don't randomly become a woman beater in your 50s. I'd have to say you are correct. I mean, if she's coming at you with a baseball bat full of gutter nails, maybe. But then that's self-defense. That's more like a hip toss and run away. <laughs> Not that you've ever done that or anything. I've hip tossed quite a few people. <laughs> have but. you ever hip tossed any women? Yes. Yes! I have. Like equal rights and equal lefts. Well, no. Like Later on, I get questioned about it. I'm like, look, she was coming with a bottle. I grabbed her arm and I hip tossed to the ground and I left. And the, yeah. the, the, the cop's like, it's like okay. You didn't throw her down and then start wailing. No, I just <laughs> hip tossed her and whoop, 
I was gone. Ah. But, you know, my, my name got brought up. I got questioned. And then, uh, you know, some other people were there like, yeah, yeah, she's going to hit him with a bottle. And he, like, threw her on the ground and took off. And they're like, oh, you're oh, free to go. Oh, with a bottle, huh? It was a beer bottle. That, that sounds like there's a story there. Uh, yeah. Why did she try to hit you with a beer bottle? Did you ask her how many penises she had? No, no, that time? was that was years later. <laughs> this one, I was on active duty, and uh, I had I went out with her like three or four times, and it really wasn't working out. So, you know, I uh, did that one NFL dating thing, and I went for her friend. I did the two point conversion. <laughs> It didn't go over well. <laughs> I had to throw somebody on the ground and run away. But the two point conversion. That's exactly what happened. I was just like, you're nice and everything, but your friend is better. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? And I said, I did that once on well, kind of accident. No, nah, this I, is I mean the, the chick totally was, intentional. The, totally intentional. Well, like the chick was literally telling me, you, you should go and meet my friend. Meet my friend. Yes. All right, fine, cool. But then. Before I had a chance to meet her friend, she takes me upstairs into the bathroom and tries to, you know. Throat slam your ding dong? Tries to throat slam the ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> you want a field goal or a touchdown? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys haven't watched NFL dating, alt tech, <laughs> I'll put yeah. a link in the chat. <laughs> that one was that. We had a good time filming that one. That was oh, funny. NFL dating. That's that was that was good stuff. You and I were laughing so damn hard oh the whole God. time just filming that, <laughs> trying to come up with how all these football terms what they could possibly mean. Th there's got to be some good outtakes we could put up for that. Oh yeah, uh, um, that's another thing that we've been doing now with the exclusive content for Patreon and Subscribestar. Uh, exclusive outtake reels every week. Uh, there's going to be a new one that's going to get posted tomorrow. All right, I've already got it ready. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I hate that song. <laughs> hate Annie. Hate Annie. I hated that. I hate you, Annie. I hate you, Annie. We had sang that all the time in choir in school, and I hated it. It is a hard knock life. I I hate that one. <laughs> That's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Stupid redheaded orphans. Stupid ginger orphans. <laughs> I had to throw the ginger in there just because James is watching. Hi, James. Thanks yeah. for the MP3s. I, I like uh, I like uh, gingers too. It's just uh, they don't have any soul and they uh, they <laughs> age like uh, banana pudding. You have no soul. I have no soul, man. There's some mean ass bitches. <laughs> but they're usually crazy, so you know what that means. Until the crazy wears out, it's some good pussy. Or until the pussy wears out. Sorry. <laughs> then all you're left with is crazy. <laughs> then it's a bread bowl from Panera Allegedly, Bread. Allegedly, that's what Just happened. Just dip with... your nuts in it like you're taking a bath. Allegedly, that's what happened with my ex-wife. Allegedly. 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 Uh, but NFL hey. dating. But the thing is, if if I did not get totally flambasted in that divorce, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. True story. And I would not have saved the lives of over 300 men. Silver lining. Yep. Yeah. And counting. I mean, this is a lot of work, uh -huh. you know, for me especially because I handle all the post production and everything. But I, I, I'm not going to lie and say it's not fulfilling. This is fun as hell. <laughs> well, I mean, I I started this to keep the gun out of people's mouths, and uh, hopefully, it's I'm doing a good job. Yeah, you remember when we did our hundred thousand subscriber special, uh -huh. and that dude from the Philippines? Yeah, you know, I mean, we're we're you know, you're touching the minds of dudes all over the world with this stuff. You know, he told me, he's like, yeah, you know, I was thinking about offing myself and, you know, self-deletion. Self-deletion. And, you know, th then he started watching videos like Narbipulbogistic, and he's like, I'm not alone. Yeah, I'm not alone. That's, you know, because a lot of guys. Because that's they your second feeling. I can speak from experience. I know that my first feeling when you started writing the horse chick episode on the board was, son of a bitch. Yeah, was he in the room? Like, it's like, wow. It's, it's like he's writing out the story of my screwed up life on the board and and at that moment you feel stupid because you're like i should have seen all this stuff yeah but you want to think that your situation is unique it's not it's it never is no it, and I, most of the mistakes that i talk about in my videos i did them myself or i know people who did it yeah so i i mean I, like literally in the military you have like a front row center seat to like some serious crash up derbies in people's lives you're like holy shit and you watch it play out over and over, over and over and, again. And, and like literally, I could be like, 
Uh, it's like a chess game. Like, he's going to do this, and then three moves later, he's getting divorced, and then I'm going to have to come in there and take take him out down so he doesn't hang himself. It's, I mean, it's how it usually goes. Yeah, I've actually thought about doing like a whole freaking like series of podcasts just on like my own personal red pill journey yeah going over all the chicks that i've been with and everything and just putting it out there and like spoon or some crap because i've known some screwed up people in my life and i've had to endure a lot of crap and i'm sure that there's a lot of people out there who are looking at the same journey sprawled out in front of them yep and they're not sure which way to take and like you know what you just play the long game and trust your gut and hope for the there's best. so many times where i just wish i would have trusted my gut and i didn't yeah and and that's when you wind up getting screwed big time. but all of that experience i acquired made me a really good first sergeant because like literally i'd get up in the morning in iraq and before anyone went out the wire to go do any dangerous shit i always looked everyone in the eye and yeah. i'd be like da, 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 da. oh oh Ooh. he's not in the game What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, he got Dear John Dar, you're gonna you're doing your laundry today, you ride his gun, okay. <laughs> Cause you, you know, you gotta be on you gotta be hundred and ten percent in a combat zone or you're gonna get killed or worse, get other people killed. Yeah. So I mean I was really good at that. Yeah. Hey. You gotta do what you gotta do. Huh? Or I'd be walking down, you know, by the dudes and I walk by some dudes like you all right, faggot? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't demonetize us please actually we're not monetized so fuck you <laughs> but i used to do that I'm like lily and they're like oh, i'm good for sorry i'm good I'm like all right <laughs> yeah. or uh what was another one <sighs> I, I had to do health and welfare for porn for porn for porn you're not allowed to have it. <laughs> is this where the the footlocker that's, German that's how, porn that's came I, from yeah yeah Okay. But that was I, first that, of all. Why does that exist? Second well, of all, please keep talking. Okay. Well, first of all, like, um, I, I'd get from battalion like, hey, you need to do a, a health and welfare, and they, they'd be like, okay, and I'd be like, well, I can't do it today because I got people doing this, this, this. Of course, I'm making excuses because I know my dudes are gonna get bu are gonna get jammed up because they always got fuck, they always got shit going on. Damn it. So, I literally <laughs> would get up there in front of formation. You know, call everyone to attention, at ease. And I'd be like, all right, we are going to do a health and welfare. And everyone goes, oh, in two days after dinner, I'll be looking for the following porn. I will search your hard drives. I'll be looking for terms such as fuck, shit, doggy style, blow job, titties, ass, and pussy. And, you know, they would, I'd go to do the health and welfare. Of course, I'd find nothing. All they really had to do on the computer was change the file name so they didn't have any of those target keywords because those are the only words I searched for. And I'd be in there like, oh, 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 ah. you got a couple uh, MP3s here that are uh, named with uh, naughty words. So I'm going to be seizing this computer tomorrow, wiping the drive. <laughs> Of course, the guy would download everything he wanted off of his computer. I would come get his computer, and then we'd wipe the drive, and then he could reinstall whatever he wanted into it. But if I did find actual uh, printed porn, it porn uh, pay, porn pay. Porn pay. <laughs> it went into a footlocker, which we kept, or I kept, for the purposes of, uh, yeah, give me one more, the purposes of horse trading for things. And it came in quite handy. Horse trading? Better than horse porn, I'm just saying. No. I, I had to, I had to, to uh, drain the main vein, and now I'm replenishing the booze stock. Okay, now there's another health and welfare story. Okay. You know, I get called up there, and uh, apparently the battalion commander was upset because there's a bunch of unissued weapons and stuff laying around, and, and it's unsafe. You know, these these are all paratroopers. Most of them, you know, you know, six, eight years of service. A lot of them already had one war under their belt. But somehow um, them having an AK-47 was dangerous. <laughs> so I, I'd walk through there and, and you know, I'm, we we're flipping over beds and pulling drawers out. Of course, you know, I found a couple of uh, pistols here and there. I remember I opened this one drawer and on the floor... A Russian hand grenade falls down. And like 
everyone like uh, just goes dead silent. And they're all looking at me. I look at the soldier. I'm like, put some tape on that. It's dangerous. <laughs> and I tell this team leader, that's getting out. You're going to pull a pin on that, throw it over the wall, in the middle of the night it's going to go down as a mortar attack. Fail. He goes, oh, roger that for a sergeant. I don't know what you're talking about. We never had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did that all the time. And I would never take the weapons away from him. Like, yeah, look, you want to have an AK-47? Yeah, you can have an AK-47. I don't care. You want to go out and patrol with an AK-47 and your M4? Fine. As long as you can carry everything, you're not a burden on anyone. I could care less. So, you know, that was it. Yeah. Nobody ever got in trouble. That's good. Yeah. And if they did, lots, lots if they did get in trouble, it was my type of trouble, which usually was PT, just, just run them, yeah. digging holes. You know, doing shitty ass jobs, moving sandbags to the roof and down and stuff. Yeah. Kind of on the same topic because right. this just was occurring to me when I was uh, I was grabbing the beer and everything. Everybody gets you know introduced to Orn Pay at a certain time in their life. You know, usually when they're probably a little too young to really be <laughs> looking at it. Eleven. When, when was your first experience? Eleven. I was just going to ask you. Eleven. And what was it? Uh, well, um, I was walking to school and this one girl who, you know, lived down, well, her father lived down the street. He was divorced, middle-aged guy. And he threw out a whole stack of penthouses and playboys. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't just let that go. I just can't let that go. So yeah. I grab them, I take them home and they're in my closet. And then I would like take one or two to school and sell them. Nice. I made some serious scratch. And that's how I got into the Orn Pay. That's how you got into the Orn Pay. And, I, and I from mean, then it was, on, it was an addiction. Well, no, it didn't really become an addiction thing. I mean, it was cool and everything, but, it, you know, once you get exposed to it early, it's not really a big deal anymore. Nah. No. It's a, after a while, it's just like anything else. You just kind of get used to it. Yeah. It's all the same. By the time I was, like, you know, halfway through high school... You know, I I go watch some VHS tapes of porn. I'm like, yeah, all right, all right. yeah. <laughs> and we, you know, we grew up in the era of you know, like scrambled or yes. pay on pay per view. Yes. Like, you, you leave it on there for a second, and you're like, is that a boob? Like, I don't, I don't even or know. Or I I converted an entire wall in my bedroom into a uh, antenna so I could pick up Channel Nine from Canada and watch Benny Hill because there was tits on that. <laughs> How did you convert an entire wall into an antenna? A staple gun and tin foil and cardboard. Rock on, man. That's some MacGyver shit yeah, right there. I did that all the time. I used to have a TV in my room of every channel. Because back in the day, they were, everyone was going to color TVs. They just threw their black and white TV out. And took go right to my house. Nice. I had like nine TVs. <laughs> I'd have I'd have like two channels going. I remember doing my homework. <laughs> <laughs> you're like Marty McFly Jr. in Back to the Future Part 2. He's like, I want channels 18, 24, the Weather Channel, MTV, and then it's all on one screen. <laughs> yeah. But um, I used to do that, you know? And God forbid it was like Godzilla Week or Doctor oh, Who Week. Oh, yeah. I would run home from school and watch Godzilla. Oh, yeah. It was like, uh, I mean, we're a somewhat different generation, but I remember when I was a kid, Monster Vision Monster on Week. TNT, that was the shit. Yeah. You know, because even though they cut out all the really good, you know, gory stuff, you still had Joe Bob Briggs doing the hilarious commentary. It's like, yeah, the MPAA murdered more fucking people than Jason in this movie. What the shit, man? <laughs> no, literally. My buddy Chuck and Eric and I would stack on the door and like the we were waiting for the bell. And we would literally run as fast as we could to my house to turn on Monster Vision. Hell yeah, and watch Vision. Godzilla stomp on some people, you know, Gamera, yeah. Ghidra, and all that other stuff. I love those movies. Yeah, man. I got my boy into him. Oh, he yeah. loves the old Godzilla stuff. Because it, <laughs> it, it, it reminds him of, uh, well, Power Rangers is kind of the same sort of deal. A Super Sentai in Japan, you know, that's repurposed Japanese footage from older shows. Yeah, yeah. But it's the same sort of deal. You know, you got dudes in suits, you know, fighting in miniature cities and whatnot. So he got into that when he was younger. And then I started showing him the Godzilla stuff. And I was like, well, this stuff came first, buddy. He's like, whoa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm raising you right. See, I miss that. I miss that my, when my kids were small and you, you, you introduce them to something and it's brand new to them. And it's just like, yeah. 
Uh, Uman mm-hmm. is asking a question. Did you guys have on TV back in the 80s yes. on UHF trying to watch the titties between the scramble lines? Yes. Yes. Yes, we did. I remember those days. <laughs> and I remember when cable was first brought into my neighborhood, me and my buddy Richard, who's dead now, uh, in the middle of the night, we'd walk right down there and turn on people's TVs and turn the volume all the way up. Because every, everyone's remote worked on everyone else's box. <laughs> so they, oh, middle, yeah, that's it's right. like they three in the morning. The same slender black remote, yeah. right? Yeah. You turn it on, and it, the guy comes out, what the hell? And like Lily, we would do it like five or six times. The guy would freak out. <laughs> It was hilarious. I was watching Grumpy Old Men yesterday. And remember the, the scene where he's trying to watch the fucking Powerball and Walter Matthau's across you know, in his house next door and he's he switching the fucking <laughs> challenge. And went, Jesus Christ! <laughs> you asshole! <laughs> no, no, we used to do that. And another thing we used to do is uh, we used to pl- do the uh, license plate lottery. We would take people's license plates off their car. Oh, no. And then go like a couple houses down and swap them with somebody else's soul. Like, <laughs> everyone on my block had different license plates for cars that weren't belong- that didn't belong to them. And if somebody goes and commits an armed robbery with that, you become an accessory. Yeah, I was just a kid. What do you do? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, why, why'd I do it? Because I could. And it, it was probably fun. I mean, it's saying. fun. But you have like a higher than average IQ and no supervision. <laughs> yeah what i mean come on yeah i, I know the feeling on that one. <laughs> i'm serious i mean i thought that I, and then i literally would go play pranks on sergeant penn who was the, the head of the juvenile wing of our police department i'd go fuck with his car <laughs> that's not asking I for used, trouble or I anything i used to light off whole grosses of bottle rockets in his backyard on sunday morning <laughs> on a time delay <laughs> Six feet of cannon fuse, oh. you know, in a, in a coffee can with some cotton and lighter fluid at the bottom, and you you put all of the bottle rockets in there, light it up, run. It takes a good three minutes before it goes off. Three I believe minutes, that's I'm, called an, I'm an improvised explosive device. I believe is the correct term for yes. such a thing. <laughs> but you know, it'd be like, and it would go on for like you know three minutes. He'd come out, God damn it, God! And it, all day long, he had to pick up all the sticks and papers. Oh, he knew man. it was me too. He knew it was me, but he, he never caught me doing it. I remember when I was a kid. I may not be remembering this exactly, but I, for some reason, it sticks in my brain. My brother and I were in the driveway of my house. I used to live in Oak Park. I think you did too, once yeah, yeah. upon a time, right? Where, where in Oak Park did you live? Uh, it was on uh, Sherman, just uh, south of like nine and a half mile road. Yeah, so. I was on Nine and Coolidge. On the on the yes, far side, by, of my, one was, of my favorite bookstores. At the I time. was between eight and nine mile. On uh, Coolidge. Yeah, I, I lived the first 11 years of my life there. And our, our driveway was like the pretty typical Oak Park driveway. It was all asphalt and it had a nice slope right there at the end. So we were lighting bottle rockets off. Well, not me. I was like five at the time. But, you know, my brother, he's got the glass Pepsi bottles sitting there There's in no the edge of the driveway. For it's, age? It's kind of on, kind of on a tilt. Yeah. You know, just happens to be kind of facing toward my neighbor's house across the street. So it's lighting off bottle rockets. Most of it just goes just fine. But then one of them in the attic window of the house across the street. <laughs> Time to go inside. Here, you take the bottle. <laughs> that way, if anybody sees you, <laughs> hey! Hey, you did it. <laughs> no, we used, to, we used to actually have bottle rocket wars. 15 on, 15 on 15. And we'd shoot Roman candles and bottle rockets at each other. It was fun. Nice. It was great, it, it, and you don't you don't come uh, come back from there without some wicked scars and burns. Oh, I bet that was great. There was, was so a, relaxing. There was a <laughs> so relaxing. <laughs> there was a viral video that I remember from like my first year of college. This freaking dude, and it, it's gross. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a homeless suspicion point, kind of a viral video, but it's really funny. Dude's in the driveway. He's like, you know, he, he sits himself to where he's basically putting all of his weight on his shoulder blades. He's got his pants pulled down to his freaking knees so that his butt is sticking up in the air. And he pulls his sack back. Somebody sticks a Roman candle in his butthole. God. And then. That's homo confirmed, man. They light it. Oh, God. And then as soon as the sparks start hitting his ass, he clenches. So the Roman candle gets stuck in his ass. And then all of a sudden it goes. (laughs) And it can't leave. It's like. Ah. (laughs) <laughs> it just tries to run away from it. <laughs> and then it just... Dude, that's not even funny. 
<laughs> I can only imagine eye, the burns from that. How that do you explain that? That is your that? stink eye. How do you explain that to your family physician? Oh, you're, yeah. How, how, well, you're a what? <laughs> oh, you stuck a Roman candle up your butt and lit it up. Uh, you're an idiot. Here's some <laughs> ointment. Get out of my office, you Get dummy. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Have some ointment. <laughs> Rub some aloe on that. It's gonna hurt for a couple of weeks. A little bit. Uh, yeah, get a get a butt donut and rub rub some ointment on that. <laughs> Here you can borrow my butt donut. <laughs> God. Uh, well, what was everybody else's first experience with Orn Pay? You know, the, the, we kind of got off in the weeds on this one, but it's a funny one. I'll I'll read some comments. It's Orn Pay. And if you guys uh, find it in your hearts to be a little generous, we've been getting screwed by YouTube. Hit us up over at the Streamlabs tip jar. Boom. And we're going to read a little bit of those right now because we do have some donations. I'm going to go back in time here. Dr. Fi was our first one. I read that one already. Polska Bob. He's a longtime listener, not the first time donator. $25 chap. Thank you very much. Here's some monies. Buy some booze, boys. Glad Way to. ahead of you. And no, uh, James, this is not tonic water. This is Cayman Jack Margarita. Quite delicious. It is as good. far as pre-packaged, it's the best. I used to think it was just a Texas thing, and then it turned out that I was dead wrong, and I was happy as a result. Lazarus Long. Is that your Orn Pay name? <laughs> $10 chat. Have some money that Google can't touch. Gold speed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kevin DeLeo, he's a subscribe star and a uh, live stream watcher. $5 chat, thank you, sir. Do you think that most people in the Red Pill community do not realize that the Rubicon has been crossed? What, what does it mean, Rubicon? The point of no return? I would guess. In context, it makes sense. Well, I mean, that, I mean that we're now at the point of not replacing ourselves. So, yes, we are on the downward spiral. Yeah, we're burning in. We're, yeah, we are now burning in. The only hope for the red pill community is to basically uh, hit the silk so you don't ride it into the scene of the crash. Yeah, At this point, you're just mitigating losses. Yeah. Because society, at this point, about half of it is behind somebody who wants to cause a Great Depression. <laughs> and suspend and, and get rid of the constitution yeah and, you know the, the same people who again are very anti-capitalist are totally on board with you know biden wanting to you know sign us back up for tpp which basically means the chinese corporations get to come over here do whatever they and want muscle our businesses and do whatever the hell they want and in case you haven't been paying attention to the kind of stuff they do in their country that's not good no it's not good at all now they have the whole uh the, what the, was the uyghurs and what's the other uh a oh, falun gong there's, Virtually yeah. every religious subsect that you can possibly think of the, is know, currently interned in the, China. The Falun Gong, they're they're cutting them up for their organs. Oh, but that allegedly, right? Well, allegedly, we can't see that. Well, listen, our, our lovely, mean, stunning, and brave the Chinese amount overlords. of organs coming out of China is statistically crazy high to the amount of people who don't donate organs. I, yeah. I, Soros is probably half organs that were harvested from somebody else. I would not be surprised. It just sickens me. Considering he's essentially a demon in human form. Yeah, he's definitely a vampire, I would say. Vampire shit. Vampire. <laughs> Dr. Fi, another $5 chat. Thank you, sir. Interestingly enough, that Dominion Voting Company had an office in Toronto right next door to Tides Foundation Canada. A reporter named Kian Bexty was doing a story on it. Never heard of her, but good. Uh, if it's spelled correctly, it's, it's, it's if it's kind of a strange. Canada. I, I don't really pay much attention. I'm sorry. Yeah, blame Canada. It's a good yeah. song. I mean, it's being run by the illegitimate, illegitimate child of Castro. A little bit. Yeah. So other than that, I haven't. That's it. Yeah. Well, so that make him a communist or a communist? I think fifty-fifty. <laughs> His mother went over there, was taken, uh, you know, delivered right to the warehouse, and uh, begot him, and that's and you know, begot. That's how things happen. A lot of begetting going on back in the day. I love how you're like, oh, that's a lot of syllables, dude. But then you just pull out words that have just like from the annals of history, begot. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
I remember one time, he's like, no, no, no. We're like, in the middle of something, and all of a sudden, you just pull out the word. That's what magicians call prestidigitation. I'm like, what the flying fornication? No, here's a story about the bagot thing. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm like nine years old, spending the summer with my grandparents. And I remember, like, I'm in the back seat, and my, my grandfather's driving. I'm like, hey, Grandpa, you know... They don't really talk much about sex in the Bible. And he's like, <laughs> and he looks at me and goes, yeah, they do. I go, no, I don't, I don't, I don't I, we don't ever talk about that. There's just a bunch of beginning and I don't know what beginning is. He's just like, begot, you mean? Yeah. Okay. That's where uh, there's uh, some uh, sex action going on and it results in a pregnancy. I'm like, oh, so that's it. They use code words. Yeah. <laughs> That's ingenious. And he just starts laughing. I really thought it was a code word. I didn't know what begot meant. <laughs> you know how you do. I did after that. I was just like, well, it, but it didn't even scar me. I was like, yeah, well, they, they be getting. There's a lot of begotten going on in the Bible. <laughs> a lot of begotten going on. Yeah. A lot of people getting stoned off their asses, but they just uh, literally talking about donkeys. <laughs> yeah, literally and figuratively. They, they stone people to death. You know, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, we got some uh, some more chats here for everybody. Let's see here. Uh, Roaming Eagle sixty six donated fifty dollars. Fifty dollars, very much. Bourbon. Thank you for your content. Your content saved me from a false accusation at work. I even got my female supervisor to agree. My accuser was a can't understand normal thinker. Excellent. My accuser tried again, and it ruined her career. Winning, winning. Actually, we were just talking about this for one, yes. putting together one of our uh, our own little uh, yep the old, the old episode, the Working Man's Survival Guide, is going to become a full webinar in the future with skits and an Amazon wish list for different materials yes. that you can how use to set it spyware, up, how to set it all up. It's going to be glorious. Yeah, it's going to be attitude, questions to answer, you know, how to actually be that guy in the office that gets your work done but doesn't get involved in craziness. You navigate. And you're, you're basically the, the Teflon Don of the uh, working world. The Teflon Don. And everything just doesn't stick to you. You're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's good times. It's man. good times. Good times yeah. All right. We have some other, we've got some people talking about their first Orn Pay experiences. Orn Pay. On here. I'm not sure. <laughs> some, James talking about getting a Sears catalog. Hey, oh. Oh, oh yeah. Dr. Fi says the first one he saw was Monster's Ball. Yeah, that's. Pretty damn close to Orn Pay. All right, now if you, I know we always say Space Ghost on the show, and yes. I know we did a couple episodes explaining exactly what I mean. Yeah, we did a whole video just talking about that whole story. All right, Space Ghost was the last TV show I was watching moments before I discovered titties. <laughs> Ruined my entire life. Yeah, because once you notice, it's over. Yeah, I literally opened the door, and like I hadn't seen this girl. For like three months. And all it's of a sudden. End of summer. School starts. She starts seeing her father on, on the weekend. You know, I open the door and there she is. And she's got like this huge rack of tits. And it, I was just like. <laughs> oh! Boy, oh! It ruined it, man. It was it over for me. It. it was over for me. I, you can never go back. Because before that, everything was like. It was copacetic. Yeah. You know, bikes. You know, money. Soda. Pizza. Everything was great. We joked a lot. And I was in the titties. Yeah. And now then, it's all you want to think. Anything about. else? Anything about his titties? Uh, yeah, titties, titties, titties. Even to this day, I'm yeah. a titty, I'm a tit man. I just am. It is what it is. I'm shameful. I remember. I mean, my, my first the first time that I started noticing women was Elizabeth Berkeley on Saved by the Bell. Yeah, Not yeah. sure why. It was showgirls. Oh yeah, she's the showgirls chick. But I remember the first time that I noticed that girls my age were starting to get some boobies. Yeah. Sixth grade? Uh, actually, no, it was seventh grade. Sixth okay. grade, I noticed that they were kind of starting to happen, but nobody really had genuine bazumbas yet. No, sixth grade for me. Seventh grade science. All of a sudden, out of nowhere. Boom. Ellen, come on up and get your test. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Running up, it was like the world transformed into slow motion before my eyes. Every dude in there was watching uh... like... Tables are lifting up off the floor just from the sheer force of erectile tissue. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? 
So, when did these come about? But when I when I say space ghost, in my mind, I'm going trying to go back to that that Zen place where I'm not thinking about that crazy stuff. The time before titties. Yeah. The time before my life was just all about. Titties. Yeah, before I just yeah, I was dick thinking, and then I wind up getting in all kinds of trouble because I was dick thinking. I could have I could have really got myself jammed up really bad, but I was luckily I haven't been caught yet. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't had anybody knock on the door like you're my daddy. Oh shit! Yeah, one day you? you never know. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. I was not a nice. I was not careful. <laughs> and Doctor Fi said, "Hell, I'm starting to recall Baywatch." Isn't that ironic that I read that first comment right after yeah, <laughs> the Baywatch, the Baywatch a reference? Uh, that's good stuff. Uh, Pulse Kebab says, "Skinamax." Skinamax. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I used to catch like little snippets of shows when I was a kid, you know, like the movies would be playing and I'm like, oh, that part looks interesting. All right. And then, you know, check out the TV guy. Once the next time that one's on Skinamax. Yep. Oh, okay. Set the TV, at the, the VCR timer and just go to bed the next morning and just switch the tape back so mom can record her soap operas. Sneak off to my room. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I used to hang at my buddy's house. His dad was really cool. I remember we're, we're eating pizza, we're doing, we're like playing arm, army men or whatever, and he, his dad comes in and says, "Hey, uh, you know, we're watching some stuff on Cinemax. You guys want to watch?" I'm like, "I don't know." He goes, "Well, it's rated R." Oh yeah, we'll hey, be right yeah. there. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> his dad was cool like that, man. Oh yeah, that was actually one aspect where my mom was very cool. From the time I was six years old. She was fine with me watching rated R films because I showed that I was mature enough to handle it, not start spouting the language or anything like that. I saw the movie Halloween when I was six. Still uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. I, I, and then one, after that, it was like Terminator, Aliens. Exorcist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You were uh, eight. I, it ruined me. <laughs> it ruined me, man. I was just traumatized for weeks. She goes in for that sequence where they're taking the blood and stuff. Out of and they go, ah! Yeah, the, the, the vomiting thing. Really uh, got me right in the priest's Whoa. mouth. Oh my god! It's like oh my, he's in his mouth. Ah! <laughs> oh, oh, uh, we got some more here. Uh, Get smart, says Craig Furness. That was actually a good show too. It was a pretty good show. Battlestar Galactica. Loved it. That's good stuff. They did, but the thing is, it started off. It always starts off good, but they they never finish it right. Yeah. At the end is always shitty. It, it is pretty rare that you have a. A series that, that ends, ends just as strong as yeah. it as its strongest point, but the so thing some is, series get better as they go. But the, but the but, Battlestar Galactica, it was it ended on some nebulous thing. You don't even, you're like what the hell? Yeah, I didn't like that at all. Yeah, I think Star Trek has a pretty decent track record. Those shows actually tended to get better as they went, and then they almost all of the series that I can think of peaked at around season five. Because yeah. Voyager was a slog up until a point, and then it started getting good. Same thing with like Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine took me like two years to watch, and I was like, eh. I loved it because I kept going back to it. But then once the uh, like the, the showrunners who came along and started making a serial thing where it blew up into the Dominion Wars, then I was like, oh shit, this is getting good. Now I have to watch that all the way through. Yeah, I yeah. binge watched the entire last season of that show. I remember I, what was it? One of the actual Star Trek movies where uh, like the Enterprise comes in right out of warp shooting all its weapons and i um I, I teared up i was like oh it's so awesome i think that was the the jj abrams star trek all of a sudden it just pops in and just, just, just everything's like <laughs> and i was just like yeah! <laughs> whoa people are getting fucked up yeah. i loved it oh and you know what you know because now you know star trek's all like touchy feeling you don't want to offend anyone no 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 you come out of warp you drop all your photon torpedoes right. fire all everything as she bear destroy everything and then fly away damn right i like that i think one of my favorite moments in any of those movies is the sixth one where you know they, they the klingons have that uh bird of prey they can fire while it's cloaked yes and they're getting all kinds of fucked up and then all of a sudden spock and and bones they retrofit that torpedo and they just fire it and you see it go and then the one guy's like oh to be or not to be and the camera goes out of focus boom and, they, and they're like <laughs> shoot that and then they target just, that shoot. explosion and fire <laughs> they just ripped them up ripped them apart <laughs> I don't know. Like, we're huge dorks in case you didn't realize. No, I'm totally cool. Actually, uh, for the the fans out there that know I write, I'm actually working on some science fiction stuff. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. I got, I got the whole world made up. I just got to write stories against it. 
Nice. Yeah, I've, I've been working on some film scripts and whatnot myself. I, I'm actually, one of the things that I'm working on is a short red pill action film. Oh. Mm-hmm. That starts out very, I, I actually devised it as a formulaic thing until the last act, and then all of a sudden the main character just pulls the rug out from under the movie and it becomes fucking hilarious. All right, yeah. I can't wait to do that. I, I want to bring you in on that as like a technical advisor because I want to have a gunfight. 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 That's ah. another thing. My, my my kids hate going to the movies with me when there's gunfights. Because <laughs> they'll be like, that's oh, 357 Magnum. Uh, it's a 38. Oh, that yeah, gun yeah. wouldn't do They're that. They're using 38 ammo on a 357. That's not good. Or uh, Bad sound design. Or I'll, I'll, I'll like, that weapon fired 21 times. It only has an 18-round magazine. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Or like somebody unloads on some of the shotgun and they they fly away. I'm like that doesn't happen. Sorry. Oh, nice. Roaming Eagle sixty six on Twitch says that Biden hashtag Biden cheated is trending on Twitter. He did flat out cheat, man. It's amazing that that's trending on Twitter though, because Twitter is the echo chamber of all far left echo chambers. Go hit the head real quick. Oh, he's gonna hit the head. All right, we're gonna talk about some Orn Pay experiences Orn pay. here. Roaming Eagle 66 says, damn, I had a girlfriend go lesbian after I dumped her. I don't know what to think of that one. <laughs> no, it's, well, he's not proud of it. I'm just saying. So he had an angry peanut? He had an angry peanut. Yeah, you know, he didn't know how to flick the bean there. Uh, I've actually had the opposite experience where I, you know, was talking to a chick who decided that she was a lesbian and then I went down to visit her and then while I was there, things happened. There was touching. But uh, um, I have a few times. It's not bad. I brought the I brought them back from the dark side. You <laughs> Pop said I sicken him. That's fine. I'm totally okay with that. All right, uh, Craig Furness, Buck Rogers. Okay, let's uh, Roman candle fights with trash can lid shields. The '80s were fun. Oh, that sounds like fun. Eight hundred dollar burrito with it. <laughs> Pop used to do that too. Uh, anyone remember Space 1999, mid-70s? Uh, it was before my time, James, but Pop remembers that one. Right. That's good stuff there. Uh, what else we got here? Uman says, I had a friend that thought lighting his farts on fire was hilarious until he did it wearing shorts and burned all the hair off of his hairy ass and legs. The burnt hair smell, dot, dot, dot. Mixed, ah. mixed with poop. Mixed with poop. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, those hairs got poop on them, man. True story. Uh, Uber Rockley Bonner says, My first experience with Orn Pay was breaking into my dad's computer. Okay. All right. Uber Rockley. I sincerely hope that the Orn Pay on your dad's computer wasn't of your mom. And if it was, I'm sure the therapy bills are astonishing and your therapist thanks you for his boat. Wow. <laughs> well, that is actually kind of funny. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. I don't know. That's that's all. That's a layer of nightmare fuel. I don't even want to go. I don't want to talk about. Urbu Rockley also wants to know: Are you guys drunk? No, this is just how we act. Yeah, we're not there yet. <laughs> no, I don't know how many of these it would actually take to get drunk because these these are they're probably just like a really good quality Smirnoff Ice or Mike's Hard Lemonade kind of yeah, a deal. It's, it's the equivalent of hard lemonade. It's, it's, it's like 5%. a beer. Yeah, it's not Nothing. that. I've had a beer that was like 11 or 12 percent alcohol. That oh, was yeah. some serious. No, business. no, I've had, it's no, good I've stuff. had some of that stout. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, stout is like drinking a like, steak, though. You remember that time of Guinness made my tongue that. go numb? Oh, yeah. I was like, we were filming Dude Law. You, you're like yeah. the Guinness extra stout. And you're like, tongue is numb. <laughs> <laughs> dude Law. There's another one dude we could Law. possibly remake because I love Dude Law. Yeah, you, you guys like the sound effects. Dude Law. Go, go go search for that one on YouTube. Yeah. Dude Law is great. Yeah, it, it, the sound effects. Th- that was awesome. Dong, dong. <laughs> dong, dong. <laughs> but yeah, man. Let's see. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, this whole election thing has got me on edge. So we're back to that now? Yeah. We, because, we're, we're talking about Orrin Pay. You know? Well, the thing is this. Is the people of America don't seem to understand that uh, if we get knocked off course, the recorrect to fix this is going to be very very bad yeah bad and like relatives not for nothing but just because of the media propaganda machine being what it is we are not going to see 
any politicians like Trump come along anytime in the near future who are willing to deal with that yep just for the greater good the well this the all right this is what i predict that um they're going to run this country and it's going to be like california huge deficit bankruptcy everyone's going to lose their ass and then you're going to see a lot of then you're going to see a very wicked rebound and they aren't going to be satisfied with just writing the ship. They're going to be out for blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I now, I'm with you on that. I'm I'm all for writing the ship, but I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of going for blood. I, I cuz that's yeah, I don't I don't want to I just don't want to see that. I hope it doesn't happen. But if they could if they can literally cheat on this election in front of everybody and get away with it, they could do anything. Agreed. And uh, that, and if they're allowed to get away with it, they're just gonna, the globalist gonna, machine is going to double down and it's going to get 100 times worse. Correct. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Because you know exactly how the left works. Mm -hmm. You give them an inch, they take the mile. Whereas, you know, Republicans, on the other hand, you give them an inch and they're like, mm, you know. A lot I, of them are like, I, I want to do this little side project over here. I don't know. They're, they're always hesitant, even when they have a mandate. Like for the first two years... You know, because Trump, they're Trump had a freaking conservative controlled Senate and House and they obstructed him. Yes. Give me a break. That was stupid. But you know, it is what it is. Uh unfortunately, uh, you know, pain is a really good teacher and we're gonna experience some pain. 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 Now I I, I don't want to scare anyone <laughs> out there. I'm just telling you. <laughs> for some reason I'm flashing back to Rocky Three. Do you have any predictions for the fight? Prediction? Pain. <laughs> Pain. I like that movie. Hey, my boy. All right. That is one of my favorite of the Rocky sequels. That was it. All right. What's your favorite Rocky movie? The first one. The first one. I think objectively, the first one is my favorite, or the, the is the best. I should say my personal favorite though is Rocky Six, for a few reasons. Mm -hmm. The motivational speech that he gives his kid is some of the best writing. That was good. And acting that, that I think good, Stallone yeah. has ever done. And it's got Polly saying some of the funniest shit I've ever heard in a movie. And he doesn't he die in that movie? Uh, no, he doesn't die in that one. Uh, he dies off camera between that one and Creed. Okay, but I love when he's uh, like, hey, you know, Paul, you come on down to the restaurant. You know, we'll cook you up something special. Italian food cooked up by a bunch of Mexicans, not so special. <laughs> <laughs> now, as a dude who worked in a restaurant business for three years, that really rang true with me because I'm like. That's fucking true, man. <laughs> <laughs> Half of the kitchen at Olga's was freaking Mexicans. And yeah. I loved them. I loved them all. They were hard, the hardest working people that you've ever met. I, they're yeah. great. I mean, I was just a busboy, so I mean, a bar back and a busboy. And yeah. occasionally I waited a little bit, but not much. Yeah. I got forced into the busboy position at a place called Mitchell's Fish Market. Amazing food. Uh -huh. But I hated it. Unless you bust or had experience in a in a restaurant that served alcohol and everything for like a, a certain specific period of time, they made you do that, and it just wasn't worth the money to me. I was making a hell of a lot more money in a place that didn't serve alcohol as a lead server. So I was yeah. Like, yeah, whatever. And I went back to the other job. No man, uh, like I I did the busboy thing before I shift off for the army. Mm. I hated it. Hated it. <laughs> Word to the wise out there. Who are considering about procreating with a whammon. Okay? Encourage your kids when they become old enough to work. To work at least a year in retail mm -hmm. and a year in food service. Yep. Because it teaches you respect for the kind of shit that those people go through. Because you can tell uh -huh. when you are out shopping and you just pay attention to how people treat you know, the people at the cash register, the people who serve them their food, whether or not they've actually worked in that industry before. Yeah, because I'm always pretty cool with all those people because I know it's such a shit job. Yeah, it yeah. is. And it's a very thankless job. It is. And then uh, there's very few places where you could work doing that kind of work and make a, a good living. Yeah. A lot of places that you could barely get by. I was amazed that I had enough to, to lease a car. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, like I had a I had a boss for one of the mortgage places I worked at who worked his way through college at one of the higher end steakhouses as a rest, as a waiter. Okay, and he made like fifteen hundred bucks a week. Oh yeah, when you get into the higher end places, yeah. you can make serious bank. Yeah, he was he was crushing it. Oh yeah, a buddy of mine actually was doing. 
he was sometimes substitute cook, but he would wait tables at Great Oaks Country Club. Never heard at, of it. Oh, it's in Rochester. Oh, yeah. Okay. That place, minimum, even on a slow week, like five to six hundred bucks in tips. All right. Well, that's not and bad. that's only working like a few shifts. Yeah, but because you know. that place is like ten thousand dollars just for the membership to get in there to where you can go and sit down and have a meal. I think I fought there a few times back in the day. Nice. We're going to get back to some Orrin Pay stories here. You want some right. Orrin Pay stories? Yeah, yeah. We got some more. Uh, James Von Maxwell, the man with the golden voice, got internet in 1994, took hours to download the goodies. Yeah, how did it feel getting arrested when you're sitting there on a folding chair naked at 3 a.m.? Did they kick you out of Kinko's? <laughs> Do you saying. remember AOL? <laughs> and you watch it, the, the picture slowly develop. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then your connection drops right right above the titties. Damn it! Yeah, go start over. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, it's good times. I still have some of those like metal metal uh, disc cases. The AOL discs used to come in. Oh yeah, I still have those, dude. I, I could have made a 1970s beaded curtain out of all the AOL discs that people never used over at Blockbuster. Yes, when I worked there. But I, I kept the cases because I actually used to burn games and throw them in there or back nice. up on. I still have those. Uh, ever make uh, Polish cannons and shoot tennis balls out of them? Of course. We got bored with just tennis balls and started soaking them in lighter fluid to make flaming projectiles. Yeah, we did that too. <laughs> Except we fired them into Coolidge. Men are moving so cars when they're younger. <laughs> oh, my God. Boys <laughs> do so much stupid shit. Ah, yeah. I did. It never occurs to us either to just like when you're firing a flaming projectile at your friends, you're that, just thinking about how cool it looks. You're not thinking about, he could die. <laughs> he could get burned up really bad. <laughs> or that person could crash your car and kill someone. You never think like that. <laughs> you never. You just do it. Troy the man. Welcome back, sir. He says, oh, God, I was 11 when I discovered Orn Pay. 14 when I discovered Internet Orn Pay. That's a big different uh, it's a jump in class right there. It's a whole different ball of wax for kids now, man. Yeah, I mean, when you want to see titties, all you got to do is turn off the safe search parameters. Yeah, well, the thing is, is like when I was when I found those penthouses and Playboys, it was all magazines. <laughs> Doctor Fy says Halle Berry has a great ass. I concur. Well, she had a great ass twenty years ago. Not, not really so much sure now. How it would look now. Not so much now. <laughs> that, that wall took its toll on her, man. It took its toll. Uh, Graham Tot says. Playboys from the 60s in an old dresser in my grandpa's barn. Nice. Yeah. I remember I was, I couldn't have been more than seven or eight years old. My brother, you know, I have a family full of very tactful people who understand and can read the room in any situation. Yeah. He comes upstairs out of the basement. I think he was getting ready to pack his shit out and move into an apartment or something like that. And he's like, dude, I found the first Marilyn Monroe centerfold. He just unfolds it in the kitchen in front of everybody. And here's his little brother. No. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's like, ah! That's, that's worth some money now. Oh, I bet it is. If you he have probably like, doesn't have it anymore. The <laughs> Merrill, uh, if you have, I believe if you have that magazine mint condition with all of the folds and everything, it's like twenty six hundred bucks. Wow, no shit. Yeah, if it's mint condition though, it's got to be mint condition. And does yeah. Playboy it, even do pictorials for their magazines anymore? I, I don't even know. I, all I know I think is it's all online. Like mint condition, it's like it's in a plastic envelope from the very beginning. It's open red like maybe three times. And yeah, that's hard to find. I, I've got a whole thing of like comic books and stuff some of them i know are have probably got to be worth a pretty penny and i haven't taken them out of the plastic in probably same 10 here. years same here like the whole uh if you remember the death of superman the reign of superman i have every single comic in that series all first edition all in their plastic yep they're probably not all that faded so i, I don't know if that'll be worth anything now because the death of superman was essentially a lark to sell more comic books <laughs> what they did they did sell some comic books oh yeah without a doubt yeah, I don't like DC because of Superman. I, I can't stand a hero that's He's like He's too God. overpowered. He's yeah. like Captain Marvel you in the can't Marvel stop Universe. Him. It's, it's just stupid. way too overpowered. I mean, at least they gave him a weakness. Well, they killed Captain Marvel early on because they realized yeah. he was way too powerful. It's bad news bears, man. You, you can't have a character like that because they're not that interesting. No. Who wants to read a story where the guy's a billionaire, wins every fight, 
you know, yeah. never has never has to really worry about getting defeated or hurt or anything. Nobody else can read that story. It's stupid. Yeah, the, the main character in your book is never going to be the ultra billionaire who fucks nope. the prom queen and everything goes right for him. You want to know who that character is? That's the villain. Yes and no, yeah. Usually that's the villain because everything goes right for them. It all goes to their head. And then they want to see if they can make, you know, the, like, you know, pull the strings on other people. Yep. You know, it's it's the imperfect, flawed hero who, you know, has weaknesses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, you know, Unbreakable. One of my favorite movies. I, I fucking love it. I love that movie. You know, he, he's an imperfect dude. His his family life is just kind of in eh, because a whore. he hasn't really come to. <laughs> his wife's a whore. <laughs> You're married to Sean Penn, you whore. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. If you guys haven't seen Unbreakable, I know that M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan's career has really hit the skids. He's kind of come back a, a little in the last like five years because the really? visit was good. I know he always has split like a, was great. He always has a cameo in his own movies. He does. I don't. I'm trying to. Yeah, he, I think he was in Split too. Yeah, and Split was. I like that actually. Um, Glass was not as good as the sum of its parts. Mm-hmm. Unbreakable and Split were much better than Glass, but. Just the fact that he's making movies that I'm interested in seeing again. Winning. Yeah, that's another thing. Hollywood has really shit the bed on the quality of their movies. Bit. They're lo- they're losing money hand over fist trying to push this, uh, agen- this woke. woke agenda. Woke. I personally am not going to go see those movies. No. Star Wars has lost me to the point yeah. where I still haven't even watched an episode of The Mandalorian. That's I've, how much Star Wars yeah, has lost I've, me. Yeah, I've watched like one episode of The Mandalorian I refuse. I'm done. They, they, they're just, they were like, I had such high hopes for Disney and Star Wars, and they did nothing but shit the bed and wipe their ass their sheets on the way out. Fail. Ul- ultimate fail. Yeah. You, you take a $4 billion franchise and, and you manage to make a movie in that series that loses money. Well, the thing is, <laughs> is not only did they pick up the story, but they had 40 years worth of fans piled up. I mean, it was all you had to do was just turn the crank. Yeah. And just keep turning the crank. And you know what really pisses me off? For the first time, and I know these books have been out forever, but I finally picked up the original Extended Universe trilogy that came out, I want to believe it was like 89, 90, yeah. uh, by Timothy Zahn. Uh, Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command. I am currently on The Last Command. These books are so fucking good that it just makes you hate the Disney movies that much more. Well, because they had all of this material in canon, they could have made movies exactly. against. Exactly. Instead, they recycle the first movie. The plot is almost the same. I would have rather them recast the parts with actors who are going to be faithful to the original spirit of the material than do what they did. Well, how many times are you going to fight the goddamn Death Star? Yeah. I mean, come on. Oh, it's not the Death Star. It's Star Killer base. Whatever. Come it's up saying, with something original. So you and your fucking and history it, boxes. How can they Abrams. afford to keep building these things? They destroy <laughs> them, they keep building them again. I mean, come on. And how do they hollow out an entire planet to put all the suck gunk all in the, there. the fusion from the stars and whatever? Yeah, it was stupid. I'm just looking out of here. Done. Troy the man says it's exactly how it is. Titties ruined my life. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> Uh, James says, showgirls, she had a rack. Yes, she did. And everything below that. I think she spends like one third of the movie completely nude, which really? is which is fine. fine. Yeah, right. not, not a bad problem there. Edward Sprankle says, a beautiful set of double Ds. That's just about every man's weakness. Yes. Yes, it is. Unless you're all about, you know, the, the backdoor blues with other dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Devonshire. Oh, very auspicious here. Uh, first uh, Orrin Pay experience, parents' friends had a satellite dish in the early 80s. They would have Orrin Pay on almost all the time on at least one of their TVs. <laughs> Who are these fucking people? That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, that chick from Adam Sandler's The Water Boy, the girlfriend, always thought she was hot. Um, Dr. Fi, I believe She's that was. Okay. Feruza Balk, I don't, the I don't chick know. from The Craft. She got naked in American History X. Okay, so I, if I don't you gotta know look her up and you want to see her boobs, you can look them up. In I, I'm movie. terrible with names, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I I have a, like pop culture BS, just not, not no pun intended, rolling around in here. I like you'll say the person and, I'm, and you tell what movie it is, and I'm like, oh yeah, I think I remember that person. <laughs> Uman says my best friend growing up was three years older than me, and his brother was three years older than him, so I got exposed to that way early. <laughs> nice. <laughs> my body was running behind. Ha ha ha. <laughs> yeah. 
Lord Devonshire says, I remember my mom realizing that I was watching it and trying to cover my eyes. That never works. No, it doesn't work. You're like, come on. Come on. Stop covering my eyes, Mom. I'm trying to watch people do some begotten here. Come on. (laughs) Dogfood8541 says, Penny Robertson from Lost in Space and Daphne from Scooby-Doo. Now, are we talking about the Lost in Space movie and the Scooby-Doo movie, or are you talking about the originals, like sci-fi series from the, the 60s one. and the cartoon characters nah, nah. of Scooby-Doo? I'd have to go through like, the new like TV series. Yeah. Well, Penny in Lost in Space was, I believe, uh, Lacey Chabert, who, who grew up very hot. I don't, I don't know. But annoying voice. Yeah, did they actually cancel that, the Lost in Space series? Uh, the new one on Netflix? Yeah, it, a, it did a second sure. season, I think, but I don't know if it's... I'm not sure. <laughs> James says, check out the movie Cats. Yeah, I did. Uh-uh. That movie is a living, functioning nightmare. <laughs> I didn't even waste my Never, time. Never. Ne- that, oh. Was it that bad? It's that bad. Uh, yeah, no way. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, I mean, I remember seeing the previews and I'm like, that's a movie I'm not going to see. Same thing with the new James Bond one with the badass chick. Oh, I'm not watching that. that. You no. take the best Bond that we've had since Connery and then you make him play second fiddle to some nope. fucking bitch that no one cares about. Not gonna. You're not getting my money. Not going to do it. I'm done here. Uman says, my buddy used to go to the flea markets with his grandmother and put porn magazines inside of other magazines and his grandma would buy them for him. <laughs> <laughs> Genius! That is genius. That is some good shit right there. I like I that. I love it. Uber Rockley says, I wish I could suck my own peg D. Uh, um, uh, no. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Uh, you really should be uh, saying that stuff over the internet. <laughs> Just saying. I don't know what to do with that. It is not often I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what to do with that. That's kind of crazy. There was a there was a really disgusting movie with a lot of real uh, shag nanigans in it, and a dude like is he's like in the position that the dude who stuffed the Roman candle up his ass is in, and he's just like he's like jacking off into his own mouth. It was some of the most. Why do you have to say these life? things to me? <laughs> so why gross. you know I have a problem? I'm gonna have nightmare fuel now. <laughs> I was like, why okay, now I gotta turn this off? Why do you? God damn it! <laughs> Why do you do that to me, man? Stop. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. oh God, it's horrible. That's why you pay me the big bucks, man. Man, that's just terrible. <laughs> that's some nightmare fuel right there. Thank you. Well, would you rather have nightmares about that or nightmares about the real shit you've been through? I'm just asking for a friend. I don't know. <laughs> You're like, that's toss up. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'd rather run I'd rather like run for cover while being, sh- being shelled in my sleep than seeing that nastiness. <laughs> Uh, I, actually, it's a recurring nightmare. I'm stuck in the open. There's a mortar attack coming, and I have to run to the bunker, and I just can't get there in time. <laughs> what? I mean, just I love making you want to puke. Why? That's kind of part of my my deal. Why? That's... Well, because you have seen shit that would turn people white. Yeah. Even the, even the, the non melanin challenged. Yep. And yep. yet. I am actually capable of putting images in your head. You're like, oh, God, it's really hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, because, you know, when I think it meet healed, I didn't get all the filters back. <laughs> Troy the Man says, you guys should read your emails and Facebook messages more. I sent you screenshots of a tweet that I sent to Biden. Yeah, I've been on, I've been on Pop about looking at the other. I do looking, actually looking check them all the time. I I'm on, check them. You check them, but you don't always respond. I'm on MeWe and parlor all day and then i i check into facebook maybe once or twice a day i don't really check it like i used to yeah like subscribe star on patreon tend to get responded to more often because there's not as many to filter through the, yeah. the facebook is just inundated with yeah and messages constantly yes and the same thing with the instagram and the instagram you've never even touched so it's like when people message on instagram I, I just if i happen to see it i go in there and i'm like hey how you doing whatever Everybody thinks I'm you, and I'm like, I don't know why you can think it's me. Like, you can always tell when you post something to social media. Why? Because it's usually misspelled or fucked up or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no punctuation. <laughs> there's no punctuation. It's like reading a Hubert Selby Jr. novel while you're high on crack. And I usually sign it with this pop. 
<laughs> pop. <laughs> I have to depop everything. Oh, Jimmy Bone says, God damn it, Blake. <laughs> You're welcome. The movie was called uh, Sh- uh, Short Bus, I believe. The same director as uh, Hedwig and the Angry Inch. The, angry the movie inch. where the dude whacks off into his own mouth. No, why are you going to say that? <laughs> Come on. He says, I'm going to have have to have four or five menageries to get that nightmare fuel out of my mind. No, that's going to be there for a while. That's not even good. Yeah. Now, now, the thing is, you're just imagining what it looked like. I actually had to see it. I'm not doing that. I now, don't want to see I, it. I don't blame you. <laughs> I, I mean, like, if somebody's like, hey, we're going to go watch this horrible shit. No, not watching it. I signed up for that movie for the cute little Asian chick. I didn't sign up for the dude whacking off into his own fucking God mouth. Damn. That took me by complete surprise. That is just nasty. <laughs> no, no. Stop it. <laughs> Justin Barnes says, The Devil in Miss Jones when I was 11 on VHS. <laughs> nice. The, the Devil in Miss Jones. They used to have some really funny the Orn Pay titles when we were. All right. Now, here's something that like really like screws with my thinking meat is you can get on the internet and you can look up some of the vintage stuff from like the 80s and some of those chicks are hot. But now they're like 70, 80 years old now. It's sad. It is sad. You're like, time marches oh, yeah. on. Oh. It doesn't. It, no, no. Time, time doesn't march on. It, it, it monkey stops, stomps these women on the ground. Because, <laughs> well, I mean, half of them. I mean, especially if they were in that particular industry, were heavy into drugs. Yes. Lots of cocaine, lots of cigarettes, and they used to abuse the ever-loving shit out of their hair at the salons because everybody in the '80s had to have a friggin' perm. Yeah, yeah. You know. And then, you know, 20, 30 years later, they all just, they look like the floor of a taxi cab. <laughs> I like that. Dude. That's actually a good analogy. <laughs> you look like the floor of a taxi cab from New York with vomit and shit in it. You look like you got some uh, some gum stuck in some places, <laughs> Arlene. <laughs> I remember in New York, I called this one chick a hag, and she's like, I'm not a hag. I'm only 26. <laughs> I'm like, time has nothing to do with it, baby. Two packs of cigarettes and too much sun, you're a hag. (laughs) Troy the man says, the tweet said, I would rather stick my peg D in a blender and drink it than accept Joe Biden as a president. Wow. Okay, then. You're committed. Well said. You're committed. All right. Star whores. Orn pay. Orn pay. (laughs) Um, We got a few more donations here from some, uh, some gentlemen. Uh, Michael Pelletier is back. Thank you, sir. Five dollar chat. Live stream on Patreon is boring. There's nobody there. They have a live stream on on Patreon. Oh, yeah, I linked everything over there. Oh, okay. I got you. I, I handle right. my business. All right, cool, cool. J E donated ten dollars. Beer money. First experience of Orn Pay. I was at a friend's house. He was kind of super in parentheses weebish, and came from money. Had all the Japanese cartoon imports. Armitage Knight. Hot spa scene, 2D waifu on VHS with English subs. Super weird. What was Japanese? It's tentacle porn. <laughs> That's uh, what, hentai. That's what they call that, right? That's tentacle what they porn. call it? I hentai. don't know. I remember I saw that. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Oh, my Lord. That's the tree root. Where's, oh, that's going. Oh, God. Uh, there's a, a really cracked out Japanese movie called, I think it's called Tetsuo the Iron Man. And a chick gets ran through with a drill right up the middle in that movie and that's live action whoa that's some messed up robocop hentai crap right there yeah i don't know that's the japanese have some crazy laws when it comes to the orn pay yes yes they do like they blur stuff out on some things but some things they don't i don't get it and they have like yeah. prostitutes it's legal in that country too yeah, you can get condoms at vending machines yes. that are like right next to the the vending machines where you can buy like toys for your kids. I know it's nuts. I need to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see. We this. could take a redonkulous field trip. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. We should probably start a GoFundMe for that. <laughs> a redonkulous field trip. We need to do some redonkulous field trips for Paranormal Pop. That's right. Yeah. This needs to happen. I know. I know. I know. We need to go to the Tuberculosis Hospital well, in Lima, Ohio. All, and would, then there's the, uh, the the place I think at Northville. Well, we need we down. need the we need the smaller night vision cameras that we could set in places, and then you know, and then we come back and check the footage later. We could do that because the thing is, is like, I don't want to be one of those persons 
uh, does the investigation walk around the camera like, oh, shh, did you hear that? Oh, uh, uh, I want to go there. I want to put the cameras down, put up a laser grid. Yeah. And, 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 you know, do shit like that. I'm not I'm not communicating with them. No, 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 no. no you will I'm, never find a Ouija board in my house. No, we're not. I'm not playing that game. I'll no. film it, but I'm not communicating with them. Fail. This is not happening. Pulse Kebab, another $10 chat. Thank you, sir. Here's some more monies for the Molly Jane link, Blake. You're welcome. Sweet. Well, because everybody in the, the comments was started talking about like you know porn stars that they like and stuff, I was like, "Google Molly Jane, you're welcome." <laughs> Molly Jane, I never heard. I, of I don't know why I find her. That's just what you like. Just just like. Just, you know, we do have a fan, uh, Mercedes Carrera. Uh, she's having some legal trouble. She's definitely having some troubles. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure how much of that is accurate because, huh. as we all know. If you go against the leftist narrative, the they will whip up whatever they have to, even if it's complete weapons-grade nonsense, Correct. to try to shut you up. I mean, I mean, our own president pissing Russian hookers and whatever yeah, the hell yeah, else, yeah, yeah. all completely fabricated, ironically, by a British intelligence asset communicating with Russian sources. Yes. <laughs> That's just insane how that was allowed to go Fail. down. Fail. Crazy. Have you heard anything from Mercedes in a while? No, she I have not. Direct contact yeah, yeah, she would bit. email us every now and again. I talked to her on the phone a couple of times, but she's got some shit going on in her life, and uh, it's pretty stressful, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, if you speak the truth in this society right now, there is no lengths that the people with the money will not go to to shut you up. Obviously. I mean, we have how many YouTube channels now just because they keep screwing with us? Well, uh, you know... Um, I think they have a hard time with us because we actually put sources in there. We don't just say we don't just speak it. We're like we tell you what it is, and then we put a source in the video. You can look it up yourself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not rocket science. We're not doing anything crazy. No. I mean, I don't have any you know super secret WikiLeak guys giving me you know, like secret information. Yeah. I, a lot of times, I'm just getting a few hints here and there, and then I just put I put it together. In my own, you know, I, I connect the dots, and I'm like, well, this is what this looks like. Historically, this is what we have going on right now. What's so funny? We got some comments on Twitch. Oh, yeah? What? <laughs> it's interesting here. Uh, Average Joe 76 says, Pop and Blake play Phasmophobia in real life now? What's Phasmophobia? I I'm not sure. Is, is that a video game, a board game? I have no idea. I don't know. I have to let, let us know, Average Joe. Uh, sext. I think that's what this is supposed to say. In real life, was it Hunter and the pissing Russian hookers? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> I, it would not surprise I me. Would, uh, I don't know. The, the kind of stuff that you saw in just the videos that I, were I released. I just can't believe. If he's willing to, to throat slam his ding dong and do his niece. He can do anything. He can do anything. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Jimmy Bones uh, donated ten dollars. Says I was looking at some gun Oren pay earlier. Care to go half seas on a Barrett fifty BMG pop? I would love to have a, a Barrett fifty cal, and um, those things are incredibly lethal out to like twenty one hundred meters. But the ammunition is like three to five dollars a shell. It's almost impossible to reload. And you need to have a four person crew just to carry that with all the complement of all the crap you need. Good times. I mean, if you need to, like, you know, stop planes and light tanks and, you know, take out vehicles, that's you need that because it's not a rifle, it's a cannon. <laughs> yeah, there's a, definitely a difference between a gun like that. Well, and when I was a sniper in the Ranger Battalion, they were just bringing in the Barrett 50 cals. And I got to fire them a few times. And let me tell you, that, that shit, I almost re enlisted. Yeah. They're like, we'll let you Whoa. carry the 50 cal. <laughs> three more years like oh, 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 i can't do it oh, i almost did it i should have damn it we got some more orn pay stories here it's good stuff my older brother showed up as joseph brightfield my older brother showed up six years old me his uh sh or showed me six years old his playboys grandma got him for his birthday said that i could look at them anytime if i asked I was too embarrassed to ask, so I would sneak in while he slept and look at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. Dr. Fye says, wasn't there a porn star who was found living in the Nevada sewers? Yes. Really? I don't remember I her name, this. but yeah, she was like destitute, homeless, living uh, in the tunnels underneath uh, 
Las Vegas. Interesting. I'm gonna have to look this up here. Let's yeah, I remember Jenny they, they, Lee. They interviewed her. Jenny Lee. Wow. Yeah, let's bring this up here. I'll show you guys. Why yeah, not? You get. You know what? You you get. You mess around with drugs. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's no good in the hood right there. So, yeah, ex porn star Jenny Lee found living homeless in a Las Vegas tunnel. Wow. Well, there you go. Anything's possible. Yeah, how the high and mighty have fallen to their knees well, to, to be suck honest, off more the, the, people. Those women don't make a lot of money, and they don't invest it properly. And you know, they probably invested in things like drugs, alcohol, yes. meth. Yeah. Well, because I mean, if you get into something like that, odds are you are not the kind of forward-thinking person who realizes that actions have consequences. Yeah. So, mm. just saying. And you just show up at the end, you're like, whoa, damn, boom. Karma's going to kick your ass. Okay. Average Joe is back with an answer to Phasmophobia. He says that it is a four-player ghost hunting game. Two weeks ago, I went to the range with my 13-year-old niece shooting a Guerre 88 and my K98. Three okay. in a meter range, and she started shooting better than me. Nice. Yeah, K88 is a uh, World War II Mauser. If and I'm reading it right. Guerre 88 is... Um, if it's a semi-automatic rifle, which existed sometime after World War II and before 1960, I think it could be wrong. It's all good. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent up to my guns. I know it's shameful, but <laughs> it's shameful. You should be ashamed. Of I know, oh. bastard. I know guns. I was a special forces weapon sergeant. <laughs> What's my job? Dr. Fi says, you got to say, those South American weather women, those broadcasters know what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like, listen, that's my, like my, my buddies. Uh, I have several friends of mine who give me nothing but a huge rash of, sh of shit because I like Latina women. What is wrong? Why would they give you a rash I of shit? I don't know. For that? I don't know. I, apparently, they think there's some Caucasian woman out there that'll just, you know, flip all the switches for me, and it just doesn't doesn't work. No, I'm sorry. I mean, once you've been to South America and you see what's what down there, yes, it, it's kind of hard not to come back here and be a little bit jaded. Well, I mean, yeah. when the majority of people are overweight. Oh yeah, the Western women, the majority of them are overweight. They, are sh they have a shitty attitude. They're entitled, narcissist, and a lot of times, you, you know, you'll talk to them, and then, like for instance, like when I I talk to you know Western women, I usually call it within the first two weeks, because every time they open their mouth, it's an orchestra of teeth and fingernails <laughs> on a chalkboard, and it does nothing but make my skin crawl, and I'm just like ah, I got to exit stage left, sorry. <laughs> Exist. Bye bye. Yeah, I'm out. See you later. So phasmophobia. I'm gonna have to write that one down. It sounds yeah. like a good time for us. I mean, it's definitely right up our alley, right? Yeah, but you know what? The thing before we do the ghost hunt thing, we have to get the equipment, and then we actually have to rehearse setting it up. Yeah. So we have a system. It's, down. it's the kind of thing where if you, especially if you go into a place that's condemned or is private property that's closed off to the the general public. You have to be able to get in there, set shit up very quickly, and get out, and then come back to retrieve it later. You, you, that I mean, is, you could take a, a, sm a small <clears throat> tour, I'm sure, but sooner or later, somebody's going to see you inside, especially if it's at night. Yeah. Because like, you have to have lights, you know, moving around, what have you. Well, yeah. I mean, there's some places you, they'll let you do that stuff. But, you know, but most of the places that get away with it have a reputation for doing that. So if we actually have a, a, a show that's around for a while... And then we can say, hey, you know, we're, we're doing this. And then they, they look it up. Yeah, well, okay, they're legitimate. And you can get away with a lot more. Polska Bob says, that's disgusting. Where's the link at Blake? A link for what? Just, oh. just to refresh my memory. We're, we're a bit off in the weeds here for about the last hour, just kind of randomly talking trash. So, yep. <laughs> going off. Here. And I, I've got apparently um, a Momo suspicion point, whatever oh. the hell that a is. A Momo. What a Momo. Okay. What's a Momo? Well, I believe that is a uh, fat woman. <laughs> I'm just saying. A Momo. I thought that was a Moo Moo. That's what she wears. To yeah, try to cover a Moo Moo is a, a nightgown for a fat woman. <laughs> yeah. Wee. It's a, actually, it's a re refrigerator cover. Oh. 
<laughs> you know when they take. Well, the if they would cover, would just cover their refrigerator instead. You know when they maybe take they the, wouldn't be so they, overweight. They take the picture from up here. So like, well, oh, yeah. yeah, they always do that. You can always tell when you are dealing with somebody who's trying to mask oh. their weight, because the picture is always taken from way the hell up there. And they always put the girls up on display, like, "Hey, how you doing?" Please don't pay attention to everything else. We can add this to the fat video we're going to do. Overweight indicators. Overweight indicators. Yep. Like when she holds the camera up and the arm is 50% is 50 the size of her head. <laughs> She's three bills. But they're actually, they've become very good at hiding even that. No, I have to actually, actually I'm going to go through a bunch of these pictures and actually, uh, come up with uh, the indicators hey if you guys got any uh fat girl indicators they put them in the comments we can always use them for the next show absolutely yeah yeah the angled picture the the bicep half the size of their head um you, you know another one you can see the rolls in the neck they have like the no chin yeah I, yeah yeah no chin or multiple chins more chins than chinese phone book Yes. Yes. Yeah. Usually yeah, spelled a really funny way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Edward Sprankle wants to know, hey, Pop, what is your preferred battle rifle? Oh, okay. Well, I usually will go with stuff that uh, it's easier to get ammunition for, so I will use an AR platform. Um, I have a couple of them. Allegedly. Allegedly. With 16-inch and uh, barrel. I have another one with a 24-inch barrel I use for target shooting. Um that one has a higher twist rate, so you can get away with using the 62 grain. Um, the rest of them, they're pretty much the uh, 55 grain twist in the barrel. You can't really go any heavier than that, so you're limited in range. All right. But, yeah, yeah, I would go with the, the AR platform. Nice. And I think we're probably going to have to do like a five-minute warning here. It is 1041 p.m., so we're going to start winding it down here. Winding but it back. we still have some questions to, ha to handle here. Okay. Uh, Justin Barnes says that a short barrel 308 is the most fun you can have with your pants on. It all depends. Uh, I have actually used the short barrel 308, uh, on, uh, HK platform, uh, doing, um, personal security detail work and, uh, so forth and close range that will tear up pretty much anything, but the accuracy goes to shit when you get beyond 200 meters. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, question for Pop. Benelli 1014 or KSG 12? Thoughts? KSG 12. Why? I'm sure it's not as expensive. Anytime you get into anything Benelli, you're talking thousands upon thousands of dollars, and it's just not worth the expense. It's just not. I mean, if you're going to pay you know, that kind of money for a, a, a Benelli, just get a 50 cal sniper rifle. I'm sorry. I am not a fan of stupid, expensive things like that. Sorry. Oh, apparently a Momo is an anime suspicion point because uh, <laughs> Dirty Harry Potter says I'm secretly a weeb. Actually, I couldn't tell you the last time that I watched anime. I watched anime. Tetsuo with the Iron Man is not an anime. No, it's it's I, a live-action film, and it's batshit insane. No, I watch anime on uh, you know Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime and stuff like that. No, I mean, I, I've watched it in the past, you know, the stuff, the standard stuff, Akira, Ghost on the Shell. You know what I really started ago. watching? Rick and Morty. Yes. On Hulu. That Pickle Rick! That is, oh my God. I did, I thought it was stupid at first. Then after I'm watching, I'm like, this stuff is hilarious. <laughs> well, I watched the producers it all. of I, Back to the Future, because they always get that question, like, why don't you guys make a fourth Back to the Future? And then they say, well, we don't really need to now that there's Rick and Morty. Yeah. Yeah, I liked Rick and Morty. I wish they would make more adult comics like that. I think that's uh, cartoons. Yeah. Polska Bob, I'm still waiting on an answer to that question because I don't know what the hell you're talking about. A link to what that's disgusting. I don't know. It is what it is. Jimmy Bones, I got a Rock Island VR80 12 gauge not too long ago, slapped a 20 round drum tour and loaded with buckshot. That is a damn good street sweeper. You know, here's the funny <laughs> part you can buy that semi automatic shotgun with the big drum. Oh. But you can't get your hands on a street sweeper. They're illegal. It's it's ridiculous. Pulse Kebab answered in the mini feeds of the Super Chats. $10. Blake, if you could link that live action hentai, that would be great. Here's some more monies. I will send you the link to the IMDb page. 
I'm not sure if it's available to stream anywhere, but you might be able to torrent it. Not that I recommend that or anything, because it's supposedly illegal to buy our things, but I'm just saying. You could probably yeah. find it somewhere. You know what? I, we should actually ask our fans if they have any good, uh, you know, links to torrent sites so that we could yeah. recon <laughs> and look at. I've thought about doing some different stuff for this show. You know, so it's not just always the two of us sitting here just talking about random tr- crap. But Well, usually it, are, tr- it turns down to doing bad stuff, army stories, and guns. True story. Or or in pay. Or in pay. <laughs> But there are so many movies that have lapsed into the public domain that you can do just full commentaries to uh-huh. on YouTube. I thought about doing stuff like that. And, of course, gaming streams. Yes. Because I have a Raspberry Pi with 12,000 games on it, including classic arcade ports like you know Marvel vs. Capcom, you know, Kick Each Other's Ass, Battletoads, Simpsons, X-Men. Yeah. Be good times. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. All right, we can do first-person shooters. Yeah, you'd probably like, smoke me I like a, I like, like a no, cheap pipe. No, no, no. Okay, just because I know how gunfights work in the real world doesn't mean they work the same in the video game. <laughs> well, did you get smoked by like some, some, ki- some killer kid? kid 313? Yes. Killer kid 313 killed me 18 <laughs> times. 18 times in one game. In fact, I spawn in. He's at his spawn point. He throws a knife <laughs> and kills me. And I can hear him over the headphone laughing. I'm like, I need your address, kid, because I'm going to send you whiskey. And he, he was probably no older than nine. That's fantastic. But, yeah, he, he it's like it was his job to kill me. Somebody changed their fucking screen name to Riggs Jr. <laughs> Riggs! Riggs! He says, plenty of nightmare fuel tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> that syphilis-ridden individual. We got to find out if he's still alive. Uh, I don't know his last name. I have to go look at my old records. You don't know his last name? Wouldn't his last name be Riggs? No, his first name. I'm sorry. His first name. Because okay. in the Army, you just know everyone the name on the tape. And it's, that's, like, everyone called me Pop. This yeah. is my last name. Pop! 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 Riggs! Riggs. And there's a bunch of guys named Riggs, so. Dirty Harry Potter says, Pop is a weeb. I did not see that one coming. What's a weeb? Apparently it's somebody who watches anime and so cartoons. Strong. So what? There's nothing wrong with that. You know? Hell, if it's I entertaining. Still, it's entertaining. I used to play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah. I used to play Traveler and Champions. You know, um, I, you know, Warhammer 40K. That's cool. Or the, you know, <laughs> fantasy Warhammer stuff. I used to play that, too. Edward Sprankle doesn't know how Riggs got syphilis. Do you want to tell this the last story and call it a night? All right. <laughs> okay. So I am a senior E4 up from my E5. And I am in charge of a squad because the squad leader and the assistant squad leader were gone. Uh, they were teaching EIB uh, to the 247 down the street. And uh, before we do sick call, since I was the senior man, you have to find out who's going on sick call. And during that six-week period, Riggs went on sick call four times. All of them for VD. <laughs> because I'd ask him. I'd be like, hey, Riggs, you going on sick call? On sick call. All right, uh, block four here. Again. Uh, reason for sick call. There's that uncomfortable silence. Oh. VD. VD. <laughs> so the last time I sent him up there, because normally, you know, he's go, he goes each child, goes on sick call. He's back by 10, 30, 11 o'clock before lunch. I'm coming back from the child hall after lunch. The runner comes and gets me and goes, hey, you need to see the commander. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what the hell did I do? Because, you know, you never go see the commander nah. unless you're in trouble. So I go in there, and he's he's all worked up. And he's like, you know, tense. Uh, sorry. He's like, Pop, what is going on with Riggs? Riggs. And I'm like, uh, he went on sick call, probably for VD. He's he he pissed hot for syphilis. I'm like, what? How did how did he get syphilis? Like, sir, I don't know. I'm not fucking him. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> it's the serious. The police are now involved. You need to call everyone he's had sexual contact with and let them know. And I'm like, oh, great. Oopsies. So I'm not even technically, I'm not even a sergeant yet, doing a sergeant's job, and now I have to get on the phone and call like eight women that this dude has been banging that he possibly gave syphilis to, and one of them was a minor. She was 16, Ooh. and I had to tell this girl's mother that 
her daughter quite possibly contracted quite syphilis. Possibly. And she had seven days to report to the Madigan to get treated or the state police would come get her and take her there. Holy oh. crap. Uh, and uh, I, I'm sure he's dead by now. He's got to be. If he could, if he well, continued, he so many diseases at that if point. If he continued at that rate, he'd have to catch AIDS and be dead by now. I, I just, I just don't see it. I can't say I'm going to argue with that one. It's bad, very bad. bad. So, <laughs> two more things here, I think, for you, Pop. Doctor Fi wants to know the difference between a dependa versus a dependapotamus. A dependa and a dependapotamus. Well, the dependapotamus is usually married to the service member. A dependa is the fat child of a dependapotamus who's attached to the service member. It's pretty cut and dry right there. It is. We used to go, go to, uh, to the uh, shop at it all the time. Hey, I better watch out for the dependent pot of pie. You, if you get in the way uh, of their uh, food item, they will trample you to death. <laughs> 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 I don't care. All right. So I think we it's, about, it's almost 11 o'clock. Holy shit, it's 11 already? Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, but I think by. we need to do one gonorrhea because that has been requested. Yeah. Gonorrhea? <laughs> no. You know, we have actually... I'm sure Riggs had gonorrhea more than once. Oh, no, no. He, he had gonorrhea. <laughs> yeah. but and that, chlamydia. Well, that, yeah, that's gonorrhea light. I know. But no, he, he had those two all the time. But, uh, yeah, the syphilis thing, that's serious. The, yes. The, that's when the health department gets involved and, yeah, yeah, just a lot of paperwork. Yeah, so that's that's the one that you that's one of the of the, the well, STIs you really want to avoid. Well, the thing is, is he pisses hot for syphilis. Now the battalion commander knows. The battalion commander's talked talk to the company commander, wanting a, a plan of action to get this whole thing fixed. Of course, because now everyone <laughs> involved, their OER, which is their officer evaluation report, is on the line. Because that's one of the reasons why I never wanted to be an officer, because of all of the horrific backstabbing that went on. And all that crazy bullshit that they do. Uh. As as a sergeant, you're like, hey, fuck you, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> all right. You go up on there, mm, 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 and then it's over. Or you're, you're wrestling around in, uh, in the PT pit, you know? It's over. The officers are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And two years later, that same officer sees that other officer, but now he has a chance to stab him in the back. It happens all the time. It's It's disgusting. Yeah, that sounds pretty disgusting. Yeah, and I remember when I got my degree, they're like, hey, you can drop your packet to be an officer. I'm like, really? No. No, I'm not doing it, sir. <laughs> I'm not drinking that Kool-Aid. I'm good. Jail. Plus, you get away. I got away with so much shit being enlisted. You know, and because I was a triple-tabbed guy, Yeah. like, literally, I could do anything. Anything. All I had to do was ask for forgiveness. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Yeah, because permission, you have to go through three or four layers, and somebody can him and haw, and it takes days, and then somebody dies. If you're on the ground, you're like, hey, this is what we're doing. Did, did you, they say you could do it? Well, not yet they didn't, but we need to do this now, so let's do it. <laughs> and then you get called up there. Why would you do that, Trauma Pop? Because it needed to be done. Well, uh, you know, that didn't follow the ROE. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't care. But your R O E, no one is D E A D. D E A D. Dead. Yeah. Because, you know, the thing is, you have to follow the R O E. If you go through the whole thing and, it, and, and things happen to, in a combat zone, things develop that, quite, that, that fast. Yes. You don't have time to go through the, you know, shove, show, shoot. You, know, you, you, don't, you don't have time for that. No. You know, it's do it now or somebody dies. <laughs> do it now. Yeah. <laughs> So I you, earned it. Do it now. As long as you can articulate that and write it in paper with your administrative violence skills, you'll, you'll be all right. Which I was able. That's going to gonna be another webinar. Administrative, administrative violence. Administrative violence. Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. And a lot of people. We got are, lots of plans. That one, administrative violence, is for the divorced dude for the main for the most part, on how he can wage war using the same bureaucracy they turn that's being used on him. Yeah. It's, it's a guerrilla war. And that one will probably won't be that long. It'll be like an hour long. We'll get it done. Yeah. Be badass. We're, we're going to get some interviews, too. We've got to talk to some people. Yes. 
like when they talk to some actual cops and how speaking the of works. which there is going to be a live stream coming up with sydney migtow we're all gonna right make, we're going to make sure that that happens it's going to probably be on a wednesday okay for us because there's like a 16 hour time difference between michigan well, and australia and from down under to here yeah, down under you want to give the australian kiss there mate <laughs> you want yeah, crikey. They have a comedy uh, a comedian that does the Dil, uh, Dilligif. Dilligif? Dil, uh, do I look like I give a fuck? <laughs> it's an acronym for that. Dilligif. I remember I, he like plays a, he plays a musical instrument, he sings it, and I was just like, God, oh, that shit's hilarious. <laughs> that dude's good. I like it. Anyway, any last thoughts for tonight about uh, Person of Color Friday or Melanin Friday or... Well, first Any of all, of the stuff has been going on I in the world. I am not a fan of the day after Thanksgiving shopping craziness. Never have been. Uh, I think I've only participated in it twice. Uh, once when I was married, and once with a girlfriend who basically made me. Didn't care for it, and I make it a point to not do it now. Do it now. Yeah. <laughs> so I usually do most of my shopping online. And Same here. Uh, that's about it. I think next time. We'll have to talk to everybody about uh, your zombie shopping tendencies. I've been cutting back on that. I know you've been cutting back on it, but I know there's a plethora of beautiful stories in there. Oh, my God. That everybody would just love to hear. <laughs> They're most, all true. Most of what is hanging on the, the, the 80% sword of the wall, like 80% of it was purchased in the dead of night, and you don't even remember ordering it, right? No, I don't. Mm-mm. That's what happens. You take Ambien and, and three shots of Jack. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not lying to you guys that's what happened i know guys hey, who took ambient and three such shots of jack and then wind up impregnating their woman and don't even remember it that's happened i got yeah. off easy buying swords <laughs> I suppose, yeah when you when you put it in that frame yeah. of light it's it just uh, it makes sense. Two hundred fifty dollars for a cool sword or child support eighteen to twenty one years. What's cheaper? I think you got the, the yeah. I'll take the swords. Thank yeah, you. you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any last questions here that I can see? Oh, it's not pop. It's hog slayer. Sweet. Sweet. Actually. Yeah. You know what? I mean, come on. I didn't have time to go chasing after all the hotties all the time and. You know, they they were available, and they were nice, and they had good lasagna. So, I, you know, it is what it is. You know, cut me some slack. Uman says that's how he ended up with a Harley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could happen. Times. All right, gentlemen. I will say good night to you here. Mahalo, arrivederci, whatever the hell. Pick your language. Pop, safety briefing. Please. Keep this in the back of your mind as we go into the holiday. Do not drink and drive. Do not drink and swim. Do not drink and raw dog it. And if you have to fight, don't go to the ground because jujitsu in the real world gets you killed. <laughs> Gazoon tight. Yeah. All right. Take it easy. <laughs> have a good night, gentlemen. And ladies. There's a lady in there. Boom. I saw, I saw a lady in there. She downvote us? No, she didn't downvote us. She was actually telling us how to spot fatties. All right. All right. Yeah. She said she was about, about five minutes behind, but you know what? Five minutes behind means that in the real world, you're on time. Oh, yeah. We even used chick time. We actually made a video about chick time. <laughs> chick time or uh, what was it? Uh, CP time. I hear a lot about that. Or BP time. Well, I don't know. Colored people time. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a real thing, right? Uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Allegedly. 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 I, I mean, I'm more familiar with chick time. Just like your ex-wife. Yeah, like if you're in a relationship, <laughs> you need to be somewhere, and you tell your woman that you, you need to be there like 45 minutes earlier than you need to be, you might arrive somewhere on time. Yeah. So. But now we're dangerously close to chick time because it is almost 11 p.m. We need to cut out here. We need to cut out here. And I'm I'm just assuming there's going to be some more main vein draining. Yes, coming up, coming up. So, y'all have a good night. <laughs>